Act One of The Woman's Prize. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Woman's Prize, or The Tamer Tamed, by John Fletcher. The Persons Represented in the Play Moroso, an old rich doting citizen, suitor to Livia. Read by Leonard Wilson. Sophocles. Read by Dublin Gothic. And Tranio. Read by M.B. Two gentlemen friends to Petruchio. Petruchio, an Italian gentleman, husband to Maria. Read by Kevin Green. Roland, a young gentleman, in love with Livia. Read by Libby Gone. Petronius, father to Maria and Livia. Read by Algie Pug. Jaques. Read by Cliff Thompson. And Pedro. Read by Timothy Ferguson. Two witty servants to Petruchio. Maria, a chaste witty lady. Read by Ariel Lipshaw. And Livia, mistress to Roland. Read by Charlotte Durkett. The two masculine daughters of Petronius. Bianca, their cousin and commander-in-chief. Read by Elizabeth Clett. The First Maid, The Country Wife, and The Doctor. Read by Capricia Page. The Second Maid, The City Wife, and The Second Watch. Read by Amanda Friday. The Third Maid, The First Watch, and The Servant. Read by Grace Garrett. Narration, Prologue, and Epilogue. Read by Elizabeth Clett. The Scene, London. Prologue Ladies, to you, in whose defence and right, Fletcher's brave muse prepared herself to fight a battle without blood, t'was well fought, too. The victory's yours, though got with much ado. We do present this comedy, in which a rivulet of pure wit flows, strong and rich in fancy, language, and all parts that may add grace and ornament to a merry play, which this may prove. Yet not to go too far in promises from this our female war. We do entreat the angry men would not expect the mazes of a subtle plot, set speeches, high expressions, and what's worse, in a true comedy, politic discourse. The end we aim at is to make you sport. Yet neither gall the city nor the court. Hear and observe his comic strain, and when you're sick of melancholy, see it again. Tis no dear physic since twill quit the cost, or his intentions with our pains are lost. Act One, Scene One. Enter Moroso, Sophocles, and Tranio, with rosemary, as from a wedding. God give em joy. Amen. Amen, say I too. The puddings now are the proof. Alas, poor wench, through what a mine of patience must thou work, ere thou know'st good hour more. Tis too true. Certain, methinks her father is dealt harshly with her, exceeding harshly, and not like a father to match her to this dragon. I protest I pity the poor gentlewoman. Methinks now he's not so terrible as people think him. This old thief flatters out of mere devotion, to please the father for his second daughter. But shall he have her? Yes, when I have Rome. And yet the father's for him. I'll assure ye I hold him a good man. Yes, sure a wealthy, but whether a good woman's man is doubtful. <laughs> Would poor no worse. What though his other wife, out of her most abundant soberness, out of her daily hue and cries upon him, for sure she was a rebel, turned his temper and forced him blow as high as she. Dost follow he must retain that long since buried tempest to this soft maid? I fear it. So do I too. And so far that if God had made me woman and his wife that must be. What would you do, sir? 
I would learn to eat coals with an angry cat and spit fire at him. I would, to prevent him, do all the ramping, roaring tricks a whore being drunk and tumbling ripe would tremble at. There is no safety else, nor moral wisdom, to be a wife and his. So I should think, too. For yet the bare remembrance of his first wife, I tell ye on my knowledge and a truth, too, will make him start in sleep and very often cry out for cudgels, coal staves, anything, hiding his breeches out of fear her ghost should walk and wear em yet. Since his first marriage he's no more the still Petruchio than I am Babylon. He's a good fellow, and on my word I love him. But to think a fit match for this tender soul. Tis very frown if she but say her prayers louder than men talk treason makes him tender. The motion of a dial when he's testy is the same trouble to him as a waterwork. She must do nothing of herself, not eat, drink, say, sir, how do ye? Make her ready, unready, unless he bid her. He will bury her ten pound to twenty shillings within these three weeks. I'll be your half. Enter Jaques with a pot of wine. He loves her most extremely, and so long twill be honeymoon. Thou, Jaques, you are a busy man, I am sure. Yes, certain. This old sport must have eggs. Not yet these ten days. Sweet gentleman with muscadel. That's right, sir. This fellow broods his master. Speed ye, Jaques. We shall be for you presently. Your worships shall have it rich and neat, and on oh, my conscience as welcome as our lady day. Oh, uh, my old sir, when shall we see your worship run at ring? That hour a standin' were worth money. So, sir. Upon my little honesty, your mistress, if I have any speculation, must think this single thrumming of a fiddle without a bow, but even poor sport. You're merry. Would I were wise, too. So, God bless your worship. The fellow tells you true. Exit Jaques. When is the day, man? Come, come, you'll steal a marriage. Nay, believe me, but when her father pleases, I am ready, and all my friends shall know it. Why not now? One charge would serve for both. There's reason in it. Called Roland. Will ye walk? They'll think we are lost. Come, gentlemen. You've whipped him now. So will he never the wench, I hope. I wish it. Exeunt. Scene two. Enter Roland and Livia. Now, Livia, if you'll go away to-night, if your affections be not made of words. I love you, and you know how dearly, Roland. Is there none near us? My affections ever have been your servant, and with what superstition I have sainted you. Why then take this way? Twill be a childish and less prosperous course than his that knows not care. Why should we do our honest and our hearty love so wrong to overrun our fortunes? Then you flatter. Alas, you know I cannot. What hopes left else but flying to enjoy ye? None so far, for let it be admitted. We have time, and all things now, in other expectation. My father's bent against us. What but ruin can such a byway bring us? If your fears would let you look with my eyes, I would shew you. And certain how our staying here would win us a course, though somewhat longer, yet far surer. And then Moroso has ye. No such matter. Behold this certain, begging, stealing, whoring, selling, which is a sin unpardonable of counterfeit cods, and musty old English crocus, switches and stones i' the toothache, sooner find me than drawn that fox moroso. But for his money, if wealth may win you. If a hawk may be high priestess amongst the Jews, his money, Roland! Oh, love, forgive me, but, but what faith have thou? Why, can his money kiss me? Yes. Behind, and laid upon a petticoat, or grasp me while I cry, Oh, good, thank you. Oh, my troth, thou mask me merry by such fear. All lie with me as you may do. Alas, what fools you men are. His mouldy money. Half a dozen riders cannot sit but stamp fast on their saddles. No, Roland, no man shall make use of me. My beauty was born free, and free I'll give it to him who loves me, not buys me. You yet doubt me. I cannot say I doubt ye. Go thy ways. 
Thou art the prettiest pulling piece of passion. Your faith, I will not fail thee. I had rather... Prithee, believe me, if I do not carry it, for both our goods. But... What buts? I would tell you. I know all you can tell me. All but this. You would have me and lie with me. Is not so? Yes. Why, you shall. Will that content you? Go. I am very loath to go. Enter Bianca and Maria. Now, oh, my conscience, thou art an honest fellow. He is my sister. Go, prithee, go. This kiss and credit me. Ere I am three nights older, I am for thee. Thou shalt hear what I do. Farewell. Farewell. Exit Roland. Alas, poor fool, how it looks. It would even hang itself should I but cross it. For pure love to the matter, I must hatch it. Nay, never look for merry hour, Maria, if now you make it not. Let not your blushes, your modesty, and tenderness of spirit make you continual anvil to his anger. Believe me, since his first wife set him going, nothing can bind his rage. Take your own counsel. You shall not say that I persuaded you. But if you suffer him— Stay, shall I do it? Have you a stomach to it? I never showed it. Twill show the rarer and the stronger in you. But do not say I urged you. I am perfect, like courteous, to redeem my country. I have leaped into this gulf of marriage, and I'll do it. Farewell, all poorer thoughts, but spite and anger, till I have wrought a miracle. Now, cousin, I am no more the gentle tame Maria. Mistake me not. I have a new soul in me made of a north wind, nothing but tempest, and like a tempest shall it make all ruin, till I have run my will out. This is brave now, if you continue it. But your own will lead you. Adieu all tenderness, I dare continue. Maids that are made of fears and modest blushes, view me and love example. Here is your sister. Here is the brave old man's love. That loves the young man. Ay, and hold thee there, wench. What a grief of heart is't, when Paphos revels should rouse up old night to sweat against a cork, to lie and tell the clock o' the lungs, to rise sport-starved. Dear sister, where have thou been? You talk thus. Why, at church, wench, where I am tied to talk thus. I am a wife now. It seems so, and a modest. You are an ass. When thou art married once, thy modesty will never buy thee pins. Bless me. From what? From such a tame fool as our cousin Livia. You are not mad. Yes, wench, and so must you be, or none of our acquaintance. Mark me, Livia, or indeed fit for our sex. Tis bedtime. Pardon me, yellow hymen, that I mean thine offerings to protract, or to keep fasting my valiant bridegroom. Whither will this woman? You may perceive her end. Or rather fear it. Dare you be partner in it? Leave it, Maria. I fear I have marked too much. For goodness, leave it. Divest you with obedient hands to bed. To bed? No, Livia. There are comets hang prodigious over that yet. There is a fellow must yet before I know that heat. Ne'er start, wench. Be made a man, for yet he is a monster. Here must his head be, Livia. Never hope it. Tis as easy with the sieve to scoop the ocean as to tame Petruchio. Stay. Lucina, hear me. Never unlock the treasure of my womb for humane fruit to make it capable, nor never with thy secret hand make brief a mother's labour to me. If I do give way unto my married husband's will, or be a wife in anything but hopes, till I have made him easy as a child and tame as fear, he shall not win a smile or a pleased look from this austerity, though it would pull another jointure from him, and make him every day another man. And when I kiss him, till I have my will, may I be barren of delights, and know only what pleasures are in dreams and guesses. A strange exordium. All the several wrongs done by imperious husbands to their wives these thousand years and upwards strengthen thee. Thou hast a brave cause. And I'll do it bravely, or may I knit my life out ever after. In what part of the world got she this spirit? 
Yet pray, Maria, not before you truly. Besides the obedience of a wife, which you will find a heavy invitation, which yet I cannot think your own, it shrews so distant to your sweetness. Tis I swear. Wait but the person and the hopes you have to work this desperate cure. A weaker subject would shame the end I aim at, disobedience. You talk too tamely. By the faith I have in mine own noble will, that childish woman that lives a prisoner to her husband's pleasure has lost her making and becomes a beast, created for his use, not fellowship. His first wife said as much. She was a fool, and took a scurvy course. Let her be named amongst those that wish for things, but dare not do em. I have a new dance for him. Are you of this faith? Yes, truly, and we'll die in't. Why then, let's all wear breeches. Now thou comest near the nature of a woman. Hang these tame-hearted Iases, that no sooner see the lure out and hear their husbands hollow, but cry like kites upon em. The free haggard, which is that woman that hath wing and knows it, spirit and plume, will make an hundred checks to show her freedom, sail in every air and look out every pleasure, not regarding lure nor quarry, till her pitch command what she desires, making her foundred keeper be glad to fling out trains and golden ones to take her down again. You are learned, sister, yet I say thee still take heed. A witty saying. I'll tell thee, Livia, had this fellow tired as many wives as horses under him with spurring of their patience, had he got a patent with an office to reclaim us confirmed by Parliament, had he all the malice and subtlety of devils, or of us, or anything that's worse than both? Hey, hey, boys, this is excellent. Or could he cast his wives new again like bells to make them sound to his will? or had the fearful name of the first breaker of wild women. Yet, yet would I undertake this man, thus single, and, spite of all the freedom he has reached to, turn him and bend him as I list, and mould him into a babe again, that aged women, wanting both teeth and spleen, may master him. Thou wilt be chronicled. That's all I aim at. I must confess, I do with all my heart hate an imperious husband and in time might be so wrought upon. To make him cuckold? If he deserve it. Then I'll leave ye, ladies. Thou hast not so much noble anger in thee. Go sleep, go sleep. What we intend to do lies not for such starved souls as thou hast, Livia. Good night. The bridegroom will be with you. That's more than you know. If ye work upon him, as you've promised, you may give example, which no doubt will be followed. So. Good night. We'll trouble you no further. If you intend no good, pray do no harm. None but pray for you. Exit Livia. Cheer, wench. Now, Bianca, those wits we have, let's wind em to the height. My rest is up, wench, and I pull for that will make me ever famous. They that lay foundations are half-builders, all men say. Enter Jaques. My master, forsooth. Oh, how does thy master? Prithee, commend me to him. How's this? My master stays, forsooth. Why, let him stay. Who hinders him, forsooth? The revel's ended now. To visit you. I am not sick. I mean to see his chamber, forsooth. Am I his groom? Where lay he last night, forsooth? In the low matted parlour. There lies his way by the long gallery. I mean your chamber. You're very merry, mistress. Tis a good sign I am sound-hearted, Jaques. But if you'll know where I lie, follow me. And what thou seest, deliver to thy master. Do, gentle Jaques. Exeunt. Ha! Is the wind in that door? By our lady, we shall have foul weather then. I do not like the shuffling of these women. They are mad beasts when they knock their heads together. I have observed them all this day, their whispers, one in another's ear, their signs and pinches, and breaking often into violent laughters, as if the end they purposed were their own? Call you this weddings? Sure, this is a knavery, 
a very trick and dainty knavery, marvelous finely carried, that's the comfort. What would these women do in ways of honor that are such masters this way? Well, my sir had been as good at fitting out these toys as any living. If he lose it now, at his own peril be it. I must follow. Exit. Scene three. Enter servants with lights, Petruchio, Petronius, Moroso, Tronio, and Sophocles. You that are married, gentlemen, have a chief for a round wager now. Of this night's stage? Yes. I am your first man. A pair of gloves of twenty shillings. Done. Who takes me up next? I am for all bets. Well, lusty Lawrence, were but my knight now. Old as I am, I would make you clap on spurs, but I would reach you and bring you to your trot too. I would, gallants. Well said, good will, but where's the staff boy, huh? Old father time, your hour glass is empty. A good tough train would break thee all to pieces. Thou hast not breath enough to say thy prayers. See how these boys despise us. Will you to bed, son? This pride will have a fall. Upon your daughter. But I shall rise again, if there be truth in eggs and buttered parsnips. Will you to bed, son, and leave talking? Tomorrow morning we shall have you look for all your great words, like St. George at Kingston, running a foot back from the furious dragon, that with her angry tail belabours him for being lazy. His courage quenched, and so far quenched. Tis well, sir. Fly, fly, quote then, the fearful dwarf. Here's no place for living man. Well, my masters, if I do sink under my business, as I find, tis very possible, I am not the first that has miscarried, so that's my comfort. What may be done without impeach or waste, I can and will do. Enter Jaques. How now? Is my fair bride a bed? No, truly, sir. Not a bed yet? Body of me, we'll up and rifle her. Here's a coil with a maidenhead. Tis not entailed, is it? If it be, I'll try all the law in the land, but I'll cut it off. Let's up, let's up, come. Well, that you cannot neither. Why? Unless you'll drop through the chimney like a daw, or force a breach of the windows, you may untile the house, tis possible. What dost thou mean? A moral, sir. The ballad will express it. The wind and the rain hath turned you back again, and you cannot be lodged there. The truth is, all the doors are barricadoed, not a cat-hole but holds a murderer in it. She's victualled for this month. Art not thou drunk? He's drunk, he's drunk. Come, come, let's up. Yes, yes, I am drunk. Ye may go up, ye may, gentlemen, but take heed to your heads. I say no more. I'll try that. Exit Sophocles. Oh, dost thou say? The door fast locked, fellow? Yes, truly, sir, tis locked and guarded, too, and two as desperate tongues planted behind it, as e'er yet battered. They stand upon their honors, and will not give up without strange composition, I'll assure you. Marching away with their pieces cocked and bullets in their mouths will not satisfy them. How's this, how's this? They are... is there another with her? Yes, Mary is there. And an engineer. Who's that, for heaven's sake? Colonel Bianca. She commands the works. Spinola's but a ditcher to her. There's a half-moon. I am but a poor man. But if you'll give me leave, I'll venture a year's wages, draw all your force before it, and mount you a blessed piece of battery. You shall not enter it these three nights yet. Enter Sophocles. I should laugh at that, good Jaquis. Beat back again. She's fortified forever. Am I drunk now, sir? He that dares most, go up now and be cooled. I have scaped a pretty scouring. What, are they mad? Have we another bedlam? They do not talk, I hope. Oh, terribly, extremely fearful. The noise at London Bridge is nothing near her. How got she tongue? As you got tail, she was born to it. Locked out of doors, and on my wedding night. Nay, and I suffer this. I may go graze. Come, gentlemen, I'll batter. Are these virtues? Do, 
and be beaten off with shame as i was i went up came to the door knocked nobody answered knocked louder yet heard nothing would have broke in by force when suddenly a waterwork flew from the window with such violence that had i not ducked quickly like a friar cetera quis nesit the chamber's nothing but a mere ostend in every window pewter cannons mounted you'll quickly find with what they are charged sir why then tantara for us and all the lower works lined sure with small shot long tongues with firelocks that at twelve score blank hit to the heart now and ye dare go up enter maria and bianca above the window opens beat a parley first i am so much amazed my very hair stands why how now daughter what entrenched a little guarded for my safety sir for your safety sweetheart why who offends you i come not to use violence i think you cannot sir i am better fortified i know your end you would fain reprieve your maidenhead a night or two yes or ten or twenty or say an hundred or indeed till i list lie with you that's a shrewd saying from this present hour i never will believe a silent woman when they break out they are bonfires till you list lie with him why who are you madam that trim gentleman's wife sir cry you mercy do you command too yes mary does she and in chief i do command and you shall go without i mean your wife for this night and for the next too wench and so as follows thou wilt not wilt thou yes indeed dear father and till he seal to what i shall set down for anything i know for ever indeed these are bugs words you hear sir she can talk god be thanked i would i heard it not sir i find that all the pity bestowed upon this woman makes but an anagram of an ill wife for she was never virtuous you'll let me in i hope for all this jesting hope still sir you will come down i am sure i am sure i will not i'll fetch you then the power of the whole county cannot sir unless we please to yield which yet i think we shall not charge when you please you shall hear quickly from us bless me from a chicken of thy hatching is this wiving prithee maria tell me what's the reason and do it freely you deal thus strangely with me you were not forced to marry your consent went equally with mine if not before it i hope you do not doubt i want that metal a man should have to keep a woman waking i would be sorry to be such a saint yet my person as it is not excellent so it is not old nor lame nor weak with physic but well enough to please an honest woman that keeps her house and loves her husband tis so my means and my conditions are no shamers of him that owes em all the world knows that and my friends no relies on my fortunes all this i believe and none of all these parcels i dare accept against nay more so far i am from making these the ends i aim at these idle outward things these women's fears that were i yet unmarried free to choose through all the tribes of men i'll take petruchio in shirt with one ten groats to pay the priest before the best man living or the ablest that e'er leaped out of lancashire and they are right ones why do you play the fool then and stand prating out of the window like a broken miller if you will have me credit you maria come down and let your love confirm it stay there sir that bargain's yet to make play sure wench the pack's in thine own hand let me die lousy if these two wenches be not brewing knavery to stock a kingdom why this is a riddle i love you and i love you not it is so and till your own experience do untie it this distance i must keep if you talk more i am angry very angry i am glad aunt and i will talk prithee peace let me not think thou art mad i tell thee woman if thou goest forward i am still petruchio and i am worse a woman that can fear neither petruchio furious nor his fame nor anything that tends to our allegiance there's a short method for you now you know me if you can carry it so tis very well 
No, you shall carry it, sir. Peace, gentle Lobel. Use no more words, but come down instantly. I charge thee by the duty of a child. Prithee, come, Maria, I forgive all. Stay there. That duty that you charge me by, if you consider truly what you say, is now another man's. You gave it away i' the church, if you remember, to my husband. So all you can exact now is no more but only a due reverence to your person, which thus I pay. Your blessing, and I am gone to bed for this night. This is monstrous! That blessing that St. Dunstan gave the devil, if I were near thee, I would give thee— Pull thee down by the nose. Saints should not rave, sir. A little rhubarb now were excellent. Then, by the duty you owe to me, Maria, open the door and be obedient. I am quiet yet. I do confess that duty. Make your best, aunt. Why, give me leave, I will. Sir, there's no learning an old stiff jade to trot. You know the moral. Yet as I take it, sir, I owe no more than you owe back again. You will not article. All I owe presently, let me but up, I'll pay. You are too hot, and such prove jades at length. You do confess a duty, or respect to me from you again, that's very near, or full the same with mine. Yes. Then by that duty, or respect, or what you please to have it, go to bed and leave me, and trouble me no longer with your fooling. For no, I am not for you. Well, what remedy? A fine smart cudgel. Oh, that I were near thee! If you had teeth now, what a case were we in? These are the most authentic rebels next Tyrone I ever read of. A week hence, or a fortnight, as you bear you, and as I find my will observed, I may, with intercession of some friends, be brought, maybe, to kiss you, and so quarterly to pay a little rent by composition. You understand me? Thou boy, thou. Well, there are more maids than Maudlin. That's my comfort. Yes, and more men than Michael. I must not to bed with this stomach, and no meat, lady. Feed where you will, so it be sound and wholesome, else live at livery, for I'll none with you. You had best back one of the dairy maids. They'll carry. But take heed to your girths, you'll get a bruise else. Now if thou wouldst come down and tender me all the delights due to a marriage-bed, study such kisses as would melt a man and turn thyself into a thousand figures, to add new flames unto me. I would stand thus heavy, thus regardless, thus despising thee, and thy best allurings. All the beauty that's laid upon your bodies, mark me well, for without doubt your minds are miserable, you have no masks for them. All this rare beauty lay but the painter and the silkworm by, the doctor with his diets, and the tailor, and you appear like fleed cats, not so handsome. And we appear like her that sent us hither, that only excellent and beauteous nature, truly ourselves for men to wonder at, but too divine to handle. We are gold, in our own natures pure, but when we suffer the husband's stamp upon us, then alleys and base ones of you men are mingled with us, and make us blush like copper. Then, and never till then, are women to be spoken of, for till that time you have no souls, I take it. Good night. Come, gentlemen, I'll fast for this night. But by this hand, well, I shall come up yet. No. There will I watch thee like a withered jury. Thou shalt neither have meat, fire, nor candle, nor anything that's easy. Do you rebel so soon? Yet take mercy. Put up your pipes. To bed, sir. I'll assure you, a month's siege will not shake us. Well said. Colonel. To bed, to bed, Petruchio. Good night, gentlemen. You'll make my father sick with sitting up. Here you shall find us any time these ten days, unless we may march off with our contentment. I'll hang first. And I'll quarter if I do not. I'll make you know, and fear a wife, Petruchio, there my cause lies. You have been famous for a woman-tamer, and bear the feared name of a brave wife-breaker. A woman shall now take those honours off, and tame you. Nay, never look so big. She shall believe me, and I am she. What think ye? Good night to all. Ye shall find sentinels. If ye dare, Sally. Exeunt above. The devil's in em, e'en the very devil, the downright devil. 
I'll devil em. By these ten bones I will. I'll bring it to the old proverb. No sport, no pie, taken down at the top of all my speed. This is fine dancing. Gentlemen, stick to me. You see our freeholds touched, and by this light we will beleaguer em, and either starve em out or make em recreant. I'll see old passages stopped, but those about em. If the good woman of the town dare succour them, we shall have wars indeed. I'll stand perdue upon them. My regiment shall lie before. I think so. Tis grown too old to stand. Let's in, and each provide his tackle. We'll fire em out, or make em take their pardons. Hear what I say on their bare knees. Am I, Petruchio, feared and spoken of? And on my wedding night am I thus jaded? Axiant all. Scene four. Enter Roland and Pedro at several doors. Now, Pedro. Very busy, Master Roland. What haste, man? I beseech you pardon me. I am not mine own man. Thou art not mad. No, but believe me, as hasty. The cause, good Pedro? There be a thousand, sir. You are not married? Not yet. Keep yourself quiet, then. Why? You'll find a fiddle that never will be tuned else from all women. Exit. What ails the fellow Tro? Jaques. Enter Jaques. Your friend, sir, but very full of business. Nothing but business? Pretty the reason. Is there any dying? I would there were, sir. But thy business? I'll tell you in a word. I am sent to lay an imposition upon souse and puddings, pasties and penny custards, that the women may not relieve yon rebels. Uh, fare ye well, sir. How does my mistress? Like a resty jade, she's spoiled for a riding. Exit Jaques. What a devil ail they? Enter Sophocles. Custards and penny pasties, fools and fiddles. What's this to the purpose? Oh, well met. Now, Roland, I cannot stay to talk long. What's the matter? Here's stirring, but to what end? Whither go you? To view the works. What works? The women's trenches. Trenches are such to see. I do not jest, sir. I cannot understand you. Do not you hear in what a state of quarrel the new bride stands with her husband? Let him stand with her, and there's an end. It should be, but by your lady she holds him out at Pike's end, and defies him, and now is fortified. Such a regiment of rotters never defied men braver. I am sent to view their preparation. This is news stranger than arms in the air. You saw not my gentle mistress? Yes, and meditating upon some secret business, when she had found it she leaped for joy and laughed, and straight retired to Sean Moroso. This may be for me. Will you along? No. Farewell. Exit Sophocles. Farewell, sir. What should her musing mean, and what her joy in it, if not for my advantage? Stay ye. Enter Livia at one door, and Moroso at another, hearkening. May not that bobtail jade Moroso, with his gold, his gew-gods, and the hope she has to send him quickly to dust excite this? Here she comes, and yonder walks the stallion to discover. Yet I'll salute her. Save you, beauteous mistress. The fox is kenneled for me. Save you, sir. Why do you look so strange? I used to look so without examination. Twenty spur royals for that word. Be like then the object discontents you? Yes, it does. Is it come to this? You know me, do you not? Yes, as I may know many by repentance. Why do you break your faith? I'll tell you that too. You are under age, and no band holds upon you. Excellent wench. Sue out your understanding, and get some more hair to cover your bare knuckles, for boys are made of nothing but dry kisses. And, if you can, more manners. Better still. Then if I want Spanish gloves, or stockings, or a ten-pound waistcoat, or a nag to hunt on, it may be I shall grace you to accept them. Farewell. And when I credit women more, may I to Smithfield, and thereby a jade, and I know him to be so, that breaks my neck. Because I have known you, and I'll be thus kind to you. Farewell, and be a man, and I'll provide you. Because I see ye are desperate. Some staid chambermaid will relieve your youth of wholesome doctrine. She's mine for all the world. Ha, wench! Ha, chicken! Gives him a box of the ear, and exit. How's this? I do not love these favours, save you. The devil take thee! 
wrings him by the nose. <laughs> There's a love token for you. Thank me now. I'll think on some of ye, and if I live, my nose alone shall not be played with all. Exit. End of Act One. Act Two of The Woman's Prize. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Woman's Prize, or The Tamer Tamed, by John Fletcher. Act Two. Scene One. Enter Petronius and Moroso. A box of the ear, do you say? Yes, sure, a sound one, beside my nose blown to my hand. If Cupid shoot arrows of that weight, I'll swear devoutly, has sued his livery, and is no more a boy. You gave her some ill language? Not a word. Or might be, you were fumbling? Word I had, sir, I had been aforehand then, but to be baffled and have no feeling of the cause. Be patient. I have a medicine clapped to her back will cure her. No, oh, sure, it must be a four, sir. Oh, my conscience, when I got these two wenches, who till now ne'er showed their riding, I was drunk with bastard, whose nature is to form things like itself, heady and monstrous. Did she slight him too? That's all my comfort. A mere hobby-horse she made, child Harold. Swit she would not know him, not give him a free look, not reckon him among her thoughts which I held more than wonder, I having seen her within three days kiss him with such an appetite as though she would eat him. There is some trick in this. How did he take it? <laughs> Ready to cry. He ran away. I fear her. And yet, I tell you, even to my anger she is as tame as innocency. It may be this blow was but a favour. I'll be sworn t'was well tied on, then. Go to, pray forget it. I have bespoke a priest, and within two hours I'll have ye married. Will that please you? Yes. I'll see it done myself, and give the lady such a sound exhortation for this knavery, I'll warrant you, shall make her smell this month on t. Nay, good sir, be not violent. Neither? It may be, out of her earnest love, there grew a longing, as you know women have such toys, in kindness, to give me a box of the ear or so. It may be. I reckon for the best still. This night, then, I shall enjoy her. You shall hansel her. Old as I am, I'll give her one blow, for it shall make her groan this twelve-month. Where's your jointure? I have a jointure for her. Have your counsel perused it yet? No counsel but the night, and your sweet daughter shall e'er peruse that jointure. <laughs> Very well, sir. I'll no demurrers on it, nor no rejoinders, the others ready sealed. Come then, let's comfort my son Petruchio. He's like little children that lose their baubles, crying ripe. Pray tell me, is this stern woman still upon the flaunt of bold defiance? Still, and still she shall be, till she be starved out. You shall see such justice, that women shall be glad, after this tempest, to tie their husbands' shoes and walk their horses. That were a merry world. Do you hear the rumour? They say the women are in insurrection, and mean to make a— They'll sooner draw upon walls as we do. Let em, let em. We'll ship em out in cuckstools. There they'll sail, as brave Columbus did, till they discover the happy islands of obedience. We stay too long. Come. Now St. George be with us. Exeunt. Scene two. Enter Livia alone. Now if I can but get in handsomely, Father, I shall deceive you. And this night for some private plotting, I'll know wedlock. I have shifted sail, and find my sisters safely a sure retirement. Pray to heaven that Roland do not believe too far, for what I said to him, for yon old fox face forced me. That's my fear. Stay, let me see this quarter fierce Petruchio. Keep with his myrmidians. I must be sudden. If he seizes me, I can look for nothing but martial law. 
To this place I have skated him, above there. Enter Maria and Bianca, above. Kevala, A friend. Who are you? Look out and know. Alas, poor wench, who sent thee? What weak fool made thy tongue his orator? I know you come to parley. You are deceived. Urged by the goodness of your cause, I have come to do as you do. You are too weak, too foolish to cheat us with your smoothness. Do not we know thou hast been kept up tame? Believe me. No, prithee, good Livia. Utter thy eloquence somewhere else. Good cousin, put up your pipes. We are not for your palate. Alas, we know who sent you. Oh, my word. Stay there. You must not think your word, or by your maidenhead, or such Sunday oaths, sworn after evensong, can inveigle us to lose our hand fast. Did their wisdoms think that sent you hither, we would be so foolish, to entertain our gentle sister Sinon, and give her credit, while the wooden jade Petruchio stole upon us? No, good sister, go home, and tell the merry Greeks that sent you, Ilium shall burn, and I, as did Aeneas, will on my back, spite of the Myrmidons, carry this warlike lady, and through seas unknown and unbelieved, seek out a land, where like a race of noble Amazons we'll root ourselves, and to our endless glory live, and despise base men. How second ye? How long have you been thus? That's all one, cousin. I stand for freedom now. Take heed of lying. For by this light, if we do credit you, and find you tripping, his infliction that killed the Prince of Orange will be sport to what we purpose. Let me feel the heaviest. Swear by thy sweetheart Roland, for by your maidenhead I fear twill be too late to swear. You mean nothing but fair and safe and honourable to us and to yourself. I swear. Stay yet. Swear as you hate Moroso, that's the surest, and as you have a certain fear to find him worse than a poor dried jack, full of more aches than autumn has, more knavery and usury and foolery and brokery than dog's ditch, as you do constantly believe he's nothing but an old empty bag with a grey beard, and that beard such a bobtail that it looks worse than a mare's tail eaten off with fillies. As you acknowledge that young handsome wench that lies by such a bilboa blade that bends with every pass he makes, to the hilts most miserable, a dry nurse to his coughs, a futurer to such a nasty fellow, a robbed thing of all delights youth looks for. And to end, one cast away on coarse beef, born to brush that everlasting cassock that has worn as many servants out as the northeast passage has consumed sailors. If you swear this, and truly, without the reservation of a gown or any moratorious petticoat, tis like we shall believe you. I do swear it. Stay yet a little. Came this wholesome motion, deal truly, sister, from your own opinion, or some suggestion of the foe? Ne'er fear me, for by that little faith I have in husbands, and the great zeal I bear for your cause, I come full of that liberty you stand for, sister. If we believe, and you prove recreant, Livia, think what a maim you give the noble cause we now stand up for. Think what women shall an hundred years hence speak thee, when examples are looked for, and so great ones, whose relations spoke as we do em, wench, shall make new customs. If you be false, repent, go home and pray. And to the serious women of the city, confess yourself. Bring not a sin so heinous to load thy soul to this place. Mark me, Livia, if thou beest double, and betrayest our honours, and we fail in our purpose, get thee where there is no women living, nor no hope that ever shall be. If a mother's daughter that ever heard the name of stubborn husband find thee, and know thy sin, Nay, if old age, one that has worn away the name of woman, and no more left to know her by, but railing, no teeth, nor eyes, nor legs, but wooden ones, come but to the windward of thee, for sure she'll smell thee. Thou'lt be so rank, she'll ride thee like a nightmare, and say her prayers backward to undo thee. She'll curse thy meat and drink, and when thou marriest, 
clap a sound spell for ever on thy pleasures. Children of five year old like little fairies will pinch thee into motley. All that ever shall live and hear of thee, I mean all women, will, like so many furies, shake their keys, and toss their flaming distaffs o'er their heads, crying revenge. Take heed, tis hideous. Oh, tis a fearful office, if thou hadst, though thou beest perfect now, when thou camest hither a false imagination, get thee gone. And as my learned cousin said, repent, this place is sought by soundness. So I seek it. Well, let me be the most despised example. I do believe thee. Be thou worthy of it. You come not empty. No. Here's cakes and cold meats and tripe of proof. Behold, here's wine and beer. Be sudden. I shall be surprised else. Meet at the low parlour door. There lies a close way. What fond obedience you have living in you, or duty to a man before you enter, fling it away. Twill but defile our offerings. Be wary as you come. I warrant ye. Exeunt. Scene three. Enter three maids. How goes your business, girls? Afoot and fair. If fortune favour us, away to your strength. The country forces are arrived. Be gone. We are discovered else. Arm and be valiant. Think of our cause. Our justice. Tis sufficient. Exeunt. Scene four. Enter Roland and Tranio at several doors. Now, Roland. How do you? How dost thou, man? Thou look'st ill. Yes. Pray can you tell me, Tranio, who knew the devil first? A woman. So. Were they not well acquainted? <laughs> Maybe so, for they had certain dialogues together. He sold her fruit, I take it. <laughs> yes, and, and cheese, that joked all mankind after. Canst thou tell me whether that woman ever had a faith after she had eaten? Oh, that's a school question. No, tis no question. For believe me, Tranio, that cold fruit, after eating bread not in her but windy promises and chalic vows, that broke out both ways. Thou hast heard, I am sure, of Aesculapius, a far-famed surgeon, one that could set together quartered traitors and make them honest men. How dost thou, Roland? Let him but take, if he dare do a cure, shall get him fame indeed, a faithless woman. There will be credit for him that will speak him. A broken woman, Tranio, a base woman. And if he can cure such a rack of honour, let him come here and practice. Now for honour's sake, why, what ails thou, Roland? I am ridden, Tranio, and spur galled to the life of patience, heaven keep my wits together, by a thing our worst thoughts are too noble for, a woman. Your mistress has a little frowned, it may be. She was my mistress. Is she not? No, Tranio. She has done me such disgrace, so spitefully, so like a woman bent to my undoing, that henceforth a good horse shall be my mistress, a good sword or a book. And if you see her, tell her I do beseech you, even for love's sake. I will, Roland. She may sooner count the good I have thought her. Our old love and our friendship shed one true tear, mean one hour constantly, be old and honest, married and a maid, then make me see her more or more believe her. And now I have met a messenger. Farewell, sir. Exit. Alas, poor Roland, I will do it for thee. This is that dog Moroso. But I hope to see him cold in the mouth first, ere he enjoy her. I'll watch this young man. Desperate thoughts may seize him. And if my purse or counsel can, I'll ease him. Exit. Scene five. Enter Petruchio, Petronius, Moroso, and Sophocles. For look, you gentlemen, say that I grant her, out of my free and liberal love, a pardon, which you and all men else know she deserves not. Can all the world leave laughing? I think not. No, by they cannot. For pray consider, have you ever read or heard of, or can any man imagine, so stiff a tomboy of so set a malice and such a brazen resolution as this young crab tree? And then answer me, and mark but this two friends, without a cause, not a foul word come cross her, not a fear, she justly can take hold on, and do you think I must sleep out of my anger and endure it, so pillows to her ease, and lull her mischief? Give me a spindle first. No, no, my masters, were she as fair as Nella Grease, and housewife, as good as the wise sailor's wife, and young still, never above fifteen, 
and these tricks to it she should ride the wild mare once a week she should believe me friend she should i would table her till all the legions that are crept into her flew out with fire i the tales methinks you err now for to me seems a little sufferance were a far surer cure yes i can suffer where i see promises of peace and amendment give her a few conditions i'll be hanged first give her a crabtree cudgel so i will and after it a flock bed for her bones and hard eggs till they brace her like a drum she shall be pampered with she shall not know a stool in ten months gentlemen this must not be enter jaques arm arm out with your weapons for all the women in the kingdoms on you they swarm like wasps and nothing can destroy them but stopping of their hives and smothering of them enter pedro stand to your guard sir all the devils extant are broke upon us like a cloud of thunder there are more women marching hitherward in rescue of my mistress than e'er turned tail at sturbridge fair and i believe as fiery the forlorn hopes led by a tanner's wife i know her by her hide a desperate woman she flayed her husband in her youth and made reins of his hide to ride the parish take them all together they are a genealogy of genets gotten and borne thus by the boisterous breath of husbands they serve sure and are swift to catch occasion i mean their foes or husbands by their forelocks and there they hang like favors cry they can but more of noble spite than fear and crying like the old giants that were foes to heaven they heave ye stool on stool and fling main pot lives like massy rocks dart ladles tossing irons and tongues like thunderbolts till overlaid they fall beneath the weight yet still aspiring at those imperious cod sheds that would tame them theirs ne'er a one of them the worst and weakest choose where you will but dare attempt the raising against the sovereign piece of puritans a maypole and a morris maugre mainly their zeal and dungeon daggers and yet more dares plant a stand of battering ales against them and drink them out of the parish lo you fierce petruchio if this comes of your impatience there's one board in the bears against the cannons of the town made it good and fought em another to her everlasting fame erected two alehouses of ease the quarter sessions running against her roundly in which business two of the disannulars lost their nightcaps a third stood excommunicate by the cudgel the constable to her eternal glory drunk hard and was converted and she victor then are they victualled with pies and puddings the trappings of good stomachs noble ale the true defender sausages and smoked ones if need be such as serve for pikes and pork better the jews ne'er hated here and there a bottle of metheglin a stout briton that will stand to em what else they want they war for come to council now you must grant conditions or the kingdom will have no other talk but this away then and let's advise the best why do you tremble have i lived thus long to be knocked o' the head with half a washing beetle pray be wise sir come something i'll do but what it is i know not to counsel then and let's avoid their follies guard all the doors or we shall not have a cloak left Accent. scene six enter petronius petruchio moroso sophocles and tranio i am indifferent though i must confess i had rather see her carted ah oh, no more of that sir are ye resolved to give her fair conditions? Twill be the safest way. I am distracted. Would I had run my head into a halter when I first wooed her. If I offer peace, she'll urge her own conditions. That's the devil. Why say she do? Say, I am made an ass, then. I know her aim. May I, with reputation, answer me this, with safety of mine honour, 
after the mighty manage of my first wife, which was indeed a fury to this filly, after my twelve strong labours to reclaim her, which would have made Don Hercules horn mad, and hid him in his hide, suffer this Sicily. Ere she have warmed my sheets, ere grappled with me, this pink, this painted foist, this cockle-boat, to hang her fights out and defy me, friends, a well-known man of war, if this be equal, and I may suffer, say, and I have done. I do not think you may. You'll make it worse, sir. Pray hear me, good Petruchio. But even now you were contented to give all conditions, to try how far she would carry. Tis a folly, and you will find it so, to clap the curb on, ere you be sure it proves a natural wildness, and not a forced. Give her conditions, for on my life this trick is put into her. I should believe so too. And not her own. You'll find it so. Then if she flounder with you, clap spurs on. And in this you'll deal with temperance. Avoid the hurry of the world. And loose. Music above. No honour on my life, sir. I will do it. It seems they are very merry. Enter Jaques. Why, God hold it. Now, Jaques? They are in the flaunt, sir. Yes, we hear them. They have got a stick of fiddles, and they firk it. In wondrous ways the two grand capitanos, they brought the auxiliary regiments, dance with their coats tucked up to their bare breeches, and bid them kiss em. That's the burden. They have got methaglin, an audacious ale, and talk like tyrants. How knowest thou? I peeped in at a loose lansket. Our help for all this day To the woman that bears the sway And wears the breeches Let it come, let it come Let this health be a seal For the good of the common weal The woman shall wear the breeches Let's drink then and laugh it And merrily, merrily quaff it and tipple and tipple around. Here's to thy fool, and to my fool. Come to all fools, though it cost us a wench many a pound. Hark! A song, pray, silence. All the women above, citizens and countrywomen. They look out. Good evening, ladies. Good you good even, sir. How have you slept to-night? Exceeding well, sir. Did you not wish me with you? No, believe me, I never thought upon you. Is this he? Yes. Sir. She has drank hard. Mark her hood. You are... Learnedly drunk. I'll hang else. Let her utter. And I must tell you, viva voce, friend, a very foolish fellow. <laughs> There's an ale figure. I thank you, Susan Brotis. Forward, sister. You have espoused here a hearty woman, a comely and courageous. Well, I have so. And to the comfort of distressed damsels, women outworn in wedlock, and such vessels, this woman has defied you. It should seem so. And why? Yes, can you tell? For thirteen causes. Pray by your patience, mistress. Forward, sister. Do you mean to treat of all these? Who shall let her? Do you hear, Velvet Hood? We come not now to hear your doctrine. For the first, I take it, it doth divide itself into seven branches. Hark you, good Maria. Have you got a catechizer here? Good zeal. Good three-piled predication. Will you peace, and hear the cause we come for? Yes, Bobtails. We know the cause you come for. Here's the cause. But never hope to carry her. Never dream or flatter your opinions with a thought of base repentance in her. Give me sack by this, and next strong ale. Swear forward, sister. By all that's cordial in this place, we'll bury our bones, fames, tongues, our triumphs, and then all that ever yet was chronicled of woman. But this brave wench, this excellent despiser, this bane of dull obedience, shall inherit his liberal will, and march off 
with conditions noble and worth herself she shall tom tyler's and brave ones too my hood shall make a hearse cloth and i'll lie under it like jane agont ere i go less my distaff stuck up by me for the eternal trophy by my conquests and loud fame at my head with two main bottles shall fill to all the world the glorious fall of old don gillian yet a little further we have taken arms in rescue of this lady most just and noble if ye beat us off without conditions and we recant use us as we deserve and first degrade us of all our ancient chambering next that the symbols of our secrecy silk stockings hue of our heels our petticoats of arms tear off our bodies and our bodkins break over our coward heads and ever after to make the tainture most notorious to all our crest be delicate our planket's let laces hang and we return again into our former titles dairy maids no more wars puissant ladies show conditions and freely i accept em call in livia she's in the treaty too enter livia above how livia hear you that sir there's the conditions for ye pray peruse em yes there she is tad be no right rebellion had she held off what think you man nay nothing i have enough of the prospect on oh, my conscience the world's end and the goodness of a woman will come together are you there sweet lady cry you mercy sir i saw you not your blessing yes when i bless a jade that stumbles with me how are the articles this is for you sir and i shall think upon it you have used me finely there is no other use for thee now extant, but to be hung up, kazakh, cap and all, for some strange monster at the apothecaries. I hear you, whore. It must be his then, sir, for need will then compel me. He will undo me in me a plans of coals to make him lusty. There's no talking to him. How are they, sir? As I expected. Liberty and clothes. Reads. When and in what way she will, continual monies, company and all the house at her dispose, no tongue to say why is this, or whether will it, new coaches and some buildings she appoints here, hangings and hunting horses, and for plate and jewels for her private use, I take it, two thousand pound in present, then for music and women to read French. This must not be. And at the latter end a clause put in, that Livia shall by no man be importuned this whole month yet to marry. This is monstrous. This shall be done. I'll humour her a while. If nothing but repentance and undoing can win her love, I'll make a shift for one. When ye are once abed, all these conditions lie under your own seal. Do you like em? Yes. And by that faith I give you, for the priest I'll ratify em. Stay. What pledges? No, I'll take that oath. But have a care you keep it. Tis not now, as when Andrea lived. If you do juggle, or alter what a letter of these articles we have set down, the self-same persecution. Mistrust him not. By all my honesty. Enough, I yield. What's this inserted here? That the two valiant women that command here shall have a supper made them, and a large one, and a liberal entertainment without grudging, and to pay for all their soldiers. That shall be too, and if a ton of wine will serve to pay em, they shall have justice. I ordain ye all paymasters, gentlemen. Then we shall have sport, boys. We'll meet you in the parlour. Ne'er look sad, sir, for I will do it. There's no danger in't. For Livia's article, you shall observe it. I have tied myself. I will. Along then now. Either I break, or this stiff plant must bow. Axiant. End of Act Two. Act Three of The Woman's Prize. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Woman's Prize, or The Tamer Tamed, by John Fletcher. Act Three. Scene One. Enter Tranio and Roland. 
Come, you shall take my counsel. I shall hang first. I'll no more love, that's certain. Tis a bane, next that they poison rats with, the most mortal. No, I thank heaven I have got my sleep again, and now begin to write sense. I can walk ye a long hour in my chamber like a man, and think of something that may better me, some serious point of learning, or my state. No more I me's and miseries, Tranio. Come near my brain, I'll tell thee. Had the devil but any essence in him of a man, and could be bought to love, and love a woman, twould make his head ache worser than his horns do, and firk him with a fire he never felt yet, would make him dance. I tell thee, there is nothing, it may be thy case, Tranio, therefore hear me, under the sun, reckon the mass of follies crept into the world with man, so desperate, so mad, so senseless, poor, and base, so wretched, roguy, and scurvy. Whether wilt thou, Roland? As tis to be in love. And why for virtue's sake? And why for virtue's sake? Dost thou not conceive me? No, by my troth. Pray then, and heartily, for fear thou fall into it. I'll tell thee why, too, for I have hope to save thee. When thou lovest, and first begins to worship the gilt calf, in primus, thou hast lost thy gentry, and like apprentice flung away thy freedom. Forthwith thou art a slave. That's a new doctrine. Next thou art no more a man. What then? A frippery. Nothing but braided hair and penny ribbons, glove, garter, ring, rose, or at the best a swabber, if thou canst love so near to keep thy making, yet thou wilt lose thy language. Why? O oh, Tranio, those things in love ne'er talk as we do. No? No, without doubt. They sigh, and shake the head, and sometimes whistle dolefully. No tongue? Yes, Tranio, but no truth in it. And when they can't, for tis a kind of canting, ye shall hear, if ye reach to understand them, which you must be a fool first, or you cannot, such gibberish, such believe me, I protest sweet, and, O oh, dear heavens, in which such constellations reign at the births of lovers. This is too well, and deign me, lady, deign me, I beseech ye, you poor unworthy lump, and then she licks him. A blank on, this is nothing. Thou hast hit it. Then she talks ten times worse, and rise and wriggles, as though she had the itch, and so it may be. Why, thou art grown a strange discoverer. Of mine own follies, Tranio. Wilt thou roll in certain there, love, again? I think so, certain. And if I be not dead drunk, I shall keep it. Tell me with this. What dost thou think of women? Why, as I think of fiddles, they delight me till their strings break. What strings? Their modesties, faiths, vows, and maidenheads. For they are like kits. They have but four strings to them. What wilt thou give me for ten pound now, when thou next lovest, and the same woman still? Give me the money, a hundred, and my bond for it. But pray hear me, I'll work all means I can to reconcile ye. Do, do, give me the money. There. Work, Tranio. You shall go sometimes where she is. Yes, straight. This is the first good I e'er got by woman. You would think it strange now, if another beauty as good as hers. Say better. Well. Conceive me, this is no point of the wager. That's all one. Love you as much or more than now she hates you. Tis a good hearing. Let him love. Ten pound more I never love that woman. There it is, and so an hundred if you lose. Tis done. Have you another to put in? No, no, sir. I'm very sorry. Now I will erect a new game and go to hell for the bell. I'm sure I am an excellent case to win. I must have leave to tell you, and tell truth, too, what she is, and how she suffers for you. Ten pound more, I never believe you. No, sir, I am stinted. Well, take your best way, then. Let's walk. I am glad your sullen fever's off. Shalt see me, Tranio, a monstrous merry man now. Let's to the wedding, and as we go, tell me the general hurry of these mad wenches and their works. I will. And do thy worst. Something I'll do. Do, Tranio. Exeunt. Scene two. Enter Pedro and Jaques. A pair of stocks bestride em. Are they gone? Yes, they are gone. And all the pans in the town beating before em. What strange admonitions they gave my master. And how fearfully they threatened if he broke em. Oh, my conscience has found his full match now. That I believe too. How did she entertain him? She looked on him. But scurvily. With no great affection, that I saw, and I heard some say he kissed her, 
but twas upon a treaty, and some copies say but her cheek. Jaquiz, what wouldst thou give for such a wife now? Full as many prayers as the most zealous Puritan conceives out of the meditation of fat veal or birds of prey crammed capons against players, and to as good a tune, too, but against her, that heaven would bless me from her? Mark it, Pedro. If this house be not turned within this fortnight with the foundation upward, I'll be carted. My comfort is yet that those Amorites that came to back her cause, those heathen whores, ha, had their hoods hallowed with sack. How devilish drunk they were. And how they tumbled, Pedro. Didst thou mark the country cavaliero? Out upon her, how she turned down the braggart. I that sunk her. That drink was well put to her. What a somersault when the chair fell she fetched with her heels upward. And what a piece of landscape she discovered. Didst mark her when her hood fell in the posset? Yes, and there rid, like a Dutch hoy, the tumbrel when she had got her ballast. <laughs> that I saw too. How fain she would have drawn on Sophocles to come aboard, and how she simpered it. I warrant her she has been a worthy striker. In the heat of summer there has been some hope on't. Hang her. She offered him a hairy groat and belched out, her stomach being blown with ale, some courtship. Upon my life has given him twenty stools since. Believe my calculation, these old women, when they are tippled and a little heated, are like new wheels. They'll roar you all the town, or they be greased. The city syncopace, Dame Tost and Butter, had the bob too. Yes, but she was sullen drunk and given to filching. I do see her offer at Spoon. My master, I do not like his look. I fear he has fasted for all this preparation. Let's steal by him. Exeunt. Scene three. Enter Petruchio and Sophocles. Not let you touch her all this night. Not touch her. Where was your courage? Where was her obedience? Never poor man was shamed so. Never rascal that keeps a stud of whores was used so basely. Pray you tell me one thing truly. Do you love her? I would I did not. Upon that condition I pass thee half my land. It may be, then, her modesty required a little violence. Some women love to struggle. She had it, and so much that I sweat for it, so I did. But to no end. I washed an Ethiop. She swore my force might weary her but win her I never could, nor should, till she consented, and I might take her body prisoner, but for her mind or appetite. Tis strange. This woman is the first I ever read of, refused a warranted occasion, and standing on so fair terms. I shall quit her. Used you no more art? Yes, I swore to her, and by no little ones, if presently, without more disputation on the matter, she grew not nearer to me, and dispatched me out of the pain I was, for I was nettled, and willingly, and eagerly, and sweetly, I would to her chambermaid, and in her hearing, begin her such a hunts up. Then she started? No more than I do now. Marry, she answered, if I were so disposed, she could not help it. But there was one called Jaquiz, a poor butler, one that might well content a single woman. And he should tilt her. To that sense, and last, she bade me yet these six nights look for nothing, nor strive to purchase it, but fair good night, and so good morrow, and a kiss or two, to close my stomach, for her vow had sealed it, and she would keep it constant. Stay ye, stay ye. Was she thus when you wooed her? Nothing, Sophocles. More keenly eager, I was oft afraid she had been light and easy. She would shower her kisses so upon me. Then I fear another's spokes i' the wheel. Now thou hast found me. There gnaws my devil, Sophocles. O oh, patience preserve me, that I make her not example by some unworthy way, as fleeing her, boiling, or making verjuice, drying her. I hear her. Mark her, then, and see the air of spite and prodigality. She has studied her way to beggars both, and by this hand she shall be, if I live, a doxy. Maria at the door, and servant, and woman. 
Fie, sir. I do not like that dressing. Tis too poor. Let me have six gold laces, broad and massy, and betwixt every lace a rich embroidery. Line the gown through with plush perfumed, and purple all the sleeves down with pearl. What think you, Sophocles? In what point stands my state now? For those hangings, let them be carried where I gave appointment. They are too base for my use, and bespeak new pieces of the civil wars of France. Let them be large and lively, and all silk work, the borders gold. I marry, sir, this cuts it. That fourteen yards of satin give my woman. I do not like the color, tis too civil. There's too much silk i' the lace, too. Tell the Dutchman that brought the mares, he must with all speed send me another suit of horses, and by all means ten cast of hawks for the river. I much care not what price they bear, so they be sound and flying. For the next winter I am for the country, and mean to take my pleasure. Where's the horseman? She means to ride a great horse. With the side saddle? Yes, and she'll run a tilt within this twelve month. Tomorrow I'll begin to learn, but pray, sir, have great care he be an easy doer. Twill spoil a scholar else. An easy doer? Did you hear that? Yes, I shall meet her morals, ere it be long, I fear not. Oh, good morrow. Good morrow, lady. How is't now? Faith, sickly. This house stands in an ill air. Yet more charges? Subject to rots and rooms. Out, aunt, tis nothing but a tilled fog. What think you of the lodge, then? I like the seat, but tis too little, Sophocles. Let me have thy opinion, thou hast judgment. Tis very well. What if I pluck it down, and build a square upon it, with two courts still rising from the entrance? And i' the mist a college for young scolds? And to the southward, take in a garden of some twenty acres, and cast it of the Italian fashion, hanging. And you could cast yourself so, too. Pray, lady, will not this cost much money? Some five thousand, say six. I'll have it battled, too. And guilt, Maria. This is a fearful course you take. Pray think on't. Ye are a woman now, a wife, and here's that must in honesty and justice look for some due obedience from you. That bare word shall cost you many a pound more, build upon't. Tell me of due obedience. What's a husband? What are we married for, to carry sumpters? Are we not one piece with you, and as worthy our own intentions as you yours? Pray hear me. Take two small drops of water, equal weighed. Tell me which is the heaviest, and which ought first to descend in duty. You mistake me. I urge not service from you, nor obedience, in way of duty, but of love and credit. All I expect is but a noble care of what I have bought you, and of what I am, and what our name may be. That's in my making. Tis true it is so. Yes, it is, Petruchio, for there was never man without our moulding, without our stamp upon him and our justice, left anything three ages after him good and his own. Good lady, understand him. I do too much, sweet Sophocles. He's one of a most spiteful self-condition, never at peace with anything but age, that has no teeth left to return his anger. A bravery dwells in his blood yet, of abusing his first good wife. He's sooner fire than powder, and sooner mischief. If I be so, so Dain, do you not fear me? No, nor yet care for you. And if it may be lawful, I defy you. Does this become you now? It shall become me. Thou disobedient, weak, vain-glorious woman! Were I but half so willful as thou spiteful, I should now drag thee to thy duty. Drag me? But I am friends again. Take all your pleasure. Now you perceive him, Sophocles. I love thee, above thy vanity, thou faithless creature. Would I had been so happy when I married! But to have met an honest man like thee, for I am sure thou art good, I know thou art honest. A handsome, hurtless man, a loving man, though never a penny with him, and those eyes, that face, and that true heart. Wear this for my sake, and when thou think'st upon me, pity me. I am cast away. Exit Maria. Why, how now, man? Pray leave me and follow your advices. The man's jealous. I shall find a time ere it be long to ask you one or two foolish questions. I shall answer as well as I am able when you call me. 
if she mean true, tis but a little killing, and if I do not venture it's farewell, sir. Exit Sophocles. Pray farewell. Is there no keeping a wife to one man's use? No wintering these cattle without straying? Tis hard dealing, very hard dealing, gentlemen, strange dealing. Now in the name of madness, what star reigned, what dog-star, bull, or bear-star, when I married this second wife, this whirlwind, that takes all within her compass? Was I not well warned? I thought I had, and I believe I know it, and beaten to repentance in the days of my first doting? Had I not wife enough to turn my love to? Did I want vexation, or any special care to kill my heart? Had I not every morning a rare breakfast, mixed with a learned lecture of ill language, louder than Tom o' Lincoln, and at dinner a diet of the same dish? Was there evening that e'er passed over us, without thou knave or thou whore for digestion? Had I ever a pull at this same poor sport men run mad for, but like a cur I was fain to show my teeth first, and almost worry her? And did heaven forgive me, and take this serpent from me, and am I keeping tame devils now again? My heart aches. Something I must do speedily. I'll die, if I can handsomely, for that's the way to make a rascal of her. I am sick, and I'll go very near it, but I'll perish. Exit. Scene 4. Enter Livia, Bianca, Tranio, and Roland. Then I must be content, sir, with my fortune. And I with mine. I did not think a look, or a poor word or two, could have dispanted such a fixed constancy, and for your ends too. Come, come, I know your courses, and there's your gew-gods, your rings and bracelets, and the purse you gave me, the money spent in entertaining you at plays and cherry gardens. There's your chain too. But if you'll give me leave, I'll wear the hair still, and I would yet remember you. Give him his love, wench. The young man has employment for it. Fire, Roland! You cannot find me out a hundred pound with this poor plot. Yet let me ne'er see day more, if something do not struggle strangely in me. Young man, let me talk with you. Well, young woman? This was your mistress once. Yes. Are ye honest? I see you are young and handsome. I am honest. Why, that's well said. And there's no doubt your judgment is good enough and strong enough to tell you who are your foes and friends. Why did you leave her? She made a puppy of me. Be that granted. She must do so sometimes, and oftentimes. Love were too serious else. A witty woman. Had you loved me? I would I had. And dearly. And I had loved you so. You may love worse, sir. But that is not material. I shall lose. Some time or other, for variety, I should have called you fool, or boy, or bid you play with the pages. But have loved you still, out of all question, and extremely too. You are a man made to be loved. This woman either abuses me or loves me deadly. I'll tell you one thing. If I were to choose a husband to mine own mind, I should think one of your mother's making would content me. For a my conscience she makes good ones. Lady, I'll leave you to your commendations. I am in again. The devil take their tongues. You shall not go. I will. Yet thus far, Livia, your sorrow may induce me to forgive you, but never love again. If I stay longer, I have lost two hundred pounds. Good sir, but thus much. Turn if thou beest a man. But one kiss off you, one parting kiss, and I am gone too. Come, shall I kiss fifty pound away at this clap? We'll have one more, and then farewell. Farewell. Well, go thy ways. Thou bearst a kind heart with thee. Has made a stand? A noble, brave young fellow, worthy a wench indeed. I will. I will not. Exit Roland. He's gone, but shot again. Play you but your part, and I will keep my promise. Forty angels in fair gold, lady. Wipe your eyes. He's yours, if I have any wit. I'll pay the forfeit. Come, then, let's see your sister, how she fares now after her skirmish. And be sure Moroso be kept in good hand. Then all's perfect, Livia. Exeunt. Scene five. Enter Jaques and Pedro. Oh, Jaques, Jaques, what becomes of us? Oh, my sweet master! 
Run for a physician! And a whole peck apothecaries, Pedro! He will die! Diddle, diddle, die! If they come not quickly, and bring all people that are skillful in lungs and livers, raise the neighbors, and all the aqua vitae bottles extant, and oh, the parson, Pedro! Oh, the parson! A little of his comfort, never so little. Twenty to one you'll find him at the bush. There's the best ale. I fly. Exit Pedro. Enter Maria and servants. Out with the trunks, ho! Why are you idle? Sirrah, up to the chamber, and take the hangings down, and see the linen packed up, and sent away within this half hour. What, are the carts come yet? Some honest body help down the chests of plate, and some the wardrobe. Alas, we are undone else. Pray, forsooth, and I beseech ye, tell me, is he dead yet? No, but is drawing on. Out with the armor. Then I'll go see him. Thou art undone, then, fellow. No man that has been near him come near me. Enter Sophocles and Petronius. Why, how now, lady? What means this? Now, daughter, how does my son? Save all you can, for heaven's sake. Enter Livia, Bianca, and Tronio. Be of good comfort, sister. Oh, my casket! How do's thy husband, woman? Get you gone, if you mean to save your lives. The sickness... Stand farther off, I prithee. Is i' the house, sir. My husband has it now. Alas, he is infected and raves extremely. Give me some counsel, friends. Why lock the doors up, and send him in a woman to attend him? I have bespoke two women, and the city hath sent a watch by this time. Meat nor money he shall not want, nor prayers. How long is't since it first took him? But within these three hours. Enter watch. I am frighted from my wits. Oh, here's the watch. Pray, do your office. Lock the doors up, friends, and patience be his angel. This comes unlooked for? All to the lodge. Some that are kind and love me I know will visit me. Petruchio within. Do you hear, my masters? Ho, you that lock the doors up. Tis his voice. Ho, oh, then let's hear him. Will ye starve me here? Am I a traitor or an heretic? Pray, sir, pray. I am as well as you are, good man puppy. Pray have patience. You shall want nothing, sir. I want a cudgel, and thee, thou wickedness. He speaks well enough. Had ever a strong heart, sir. Will ye hear me? First be pleased to think I know ye all, and can distinguish every man's several voice. You that spoke first, I know my father-in-law, the other Tranio, and I heard Sophocles, the last, pray mark me, is my damned wife Maria. If any man misdoubt me for infected, there is mine arm, let any man look on't. Enter doctor and apothecary. Save ye, gentlemen. Oh, welcome, doctor. Ye come in happy time. Pray your opinion. What think you of his pulse? It beats with busiest and shows a general inflammation, which is the symptom of a pestilent fever. Take twenty ounces for him. Take a fool. Take an ounce from mine arm. And, Dr. Duzace, I'll make a close stool of your velvet costard. Gentlemen, do ye make a May game on me? I tell ye once again, I am as sound, as well, as wholesome, and as sensible as any of ye all. Let me out quickly, or, as I am a man, I'll beat the walls down, and the first thing I light upon shall pay for it. Exit, Doctor and Apothecary. Nay, we'll go with you, Doctor. Tis the safest. I saw the tokens, sir. Then there is but one way. Will it please you open? His fit grows stronger still. Let's save ourselves, sir. He's past all worldly cure. Friends, do your office. And what he wants, if money, love, or labour, or any way may win it, let him have it. Farewell, and pray, my honest friends. Exeunt. Why, rascals, friends, gentlemen, thou beastly wife, Jaquiz, none hear me? Who at the door there? Think, I pray so, whether you are going, and prepare yourself. These idle thoughts disturb you. The good gentlewoman, your wife, has taken care you shall want nothing. Shall I come out in quiet? Answer me, or shall I charge a fowling piece and make mine own way? Two of ye I cannot miss. If I miss three, ye come here to assault me. I am as excellent well, I thank heaven for it, and have as good a stomach at this instant. That's an ill sign. He draws on. He's a dead man. And sleep as soundly. 
Will you look upon me? Do you want pen and ink, while you have settled your state? Sirs, I am well as you are, or any rascal living. Would you were, sir? Look to yourselves, and if you love your lives, open the door, and fly me, for I shoot else. I'll shoot, and presently chain bullets, and under four I will not kill. Let's quit him. It may be it is a trick. He's dangerous. The devil take the hindmost, I cry. Exit watch, running. Enter Petruchio with a piece. Have among ye. The door shall open too. I'll have a fair shoot. Are ye all gone? Tricks in my old days, crackers put now upon me. And by Lady Greensleeves, am I grown so tame after all my triumphs? But that I should be thought mad, if I railed, as much as they deserve against these women, I would now rip up, from the primitive cuckold, all their arch-villainies, and all their doubles, which are more than a hunted hare e'er thought on, when a man has the fairest and the sweetest of all their sex, and as he thinks the noblest, what has he then? And I'll speak modestly, he has a quartern ague, that shall shake all his estate to nothing, never cured nor never dying, he has a ship to venture his fame and credit in, which, if he man not with more continual labour than a galley, to make her tithe, either she grows a tumbrel, not worth the cloth she wears, or springs more leaks than all the fame of his posterity can ever stop again. I could rail twenty days. Out on em, hedgehogs! He that shall touch em has a thousand thorns run through his fingers. If I were unmarried, I would do anything below repentance, any base dunghill slavery. Be a hangman, ere I would be a husband. Oh, the thousand, thousand, ten thousand ways they have to kill us! Some fall with too much stringing of the fiddles, and those are fools. Some that are not suffered, and those are maudlin lovers. Some, like scorpions, they poison with their tails, and those are martyrs. Some die with doing good, those benefactors, and leave them land to leap away. Some few, for those are the rarest, they are said to kill with kindness and fair usage. But what they are my catalogue discovers not. Only it is thought they are buried in old walls with their heels upward. I could rail twenty days together now. I'll seek em out, and if I have not reason, and very sensible, why this was done, I'll go a-birding yet, and some shall smart for it. Exit. End of Act Three. Act Four of The Woman's Prize. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Woman's Prize, or The Tamer Tamed, by John Fletcher. Act Four. Scene One. Enter Moroso and Petronius. That I do love her is without all question, and most extremely, dearly, most exactly. And that I would even now, this present Monday, before all others, maids, wives, women, widows of what degree or calling, marry her as certain too. But to be made a whim-wham, a jib-crack, and a gentleman of the first house, for all my kindness to her. How you take it? Thou get a wench, thou get a dozen nightcaps. Wouldst have her come, and lick thee like a calf, and blow her nose, and bust thee? Not so, neither. What wouldst thou have her do? Do as she should do, put on a clean smock, and to church, and marry, and then to bed a god's name. This is fair play, and keeps the king's peace. Let her leave her bobs. I have had too many of them, and her quillets, she's as nimble that way as an eel. But in the way she ought, to me especially, a sow of lead is swifter. Quote thy griefs down. Give fair quarter. I am old and crazy, and subject to much fumbling, I confess it. Yet something I would have that swarm to hatch me. But understand me, I would have it so I buy not more repentance in the bargain than the ware's worth I have. If you allow me, worthy your son-in-law, and your allowance, do it a way of credit. Let me show so, and not be troubled in my visitations, with blows and bitterness and downright railings, as if we were to couple like two cats with clawing and loud clamour. Thou fond man, hast thou forgot the ballad, crabbed age? 
can may and january match together and ne'er a storm between em say she abuse thee put case she do well nay believe she does i do believe she does and devilishly art thou a whit the worse that's not the matter i know being old tis fit i am abused i know tis handsome and i know moreover i am to love her for it now you come to me nay more than this i find too and find certain what gold i have pearl bracelets rings or ouches or what she can desire gowns petticoats waistcoats embroidered stockings scarfs cowls feathers hats five pound garters muffs masks ruffs and ribbons i am to give her for it tis right you are so but when i have done all this and think it duty is it requisite another bore my nostrils riddle me that go get you gone and dream she's thine within these two days for she is so the boy's beside the saddle get warm broths and feed apace think not of worldly business it cools the blood leave off your tricks they are hateful and mere forerunners of the ancient measures contrive your beard of the top cut like vendogos it shows you would be wise and burn your nightcap it looks like half a winding sheet that urges from a young wench nothing but cold repentance you may eat onions so you'll not be lavish i am glad of that they purge the blood and quicken but after em conceive me sweep your mouth and where there wants a tooth stick in a clove shall i hope once again say it you shall sir and you shall have your hope why there's a match then enter bianca and tranio you shall not find me wanting get you gone here's the old man he'll think you were plotting else something against his new son exit tranio fare ye well sir exit moroso and every buck had his doe and every cock called a bell at his toe oh what sport should we have then then boys then oh what sport should we have then this is a spirit that inspires them all give you good even a word with you sweet lady i am very hasty sir so you were ever well what's your will was not your skilful hand in this last stratagem were not your mischiefs eking the matter on in shutting up is that it yes i'll tell you do and truly good old man i do grieve exceeding much i fear too much i am sorry for your heaviness belike you can repent then there you are wide too not that the thing was done conceive me rightly does any way molest me what then lady but that i was not in there's my sorrow there now you understand me for i'll tell you it was so sound a piece and so well carried and if you mark the way so handsomely of such a height and excellence and art i have not known a braver for conceive me when the gross fool her husband would be sick pray stay nay good your patience and no sense for it then stepped your daughter in by your appointment i would it had on that condition i had but one half smock i like it so well and like an excellent cunning woman cured me one madness with another which was rare and to our weak beliefs a wonder hang ye for surely if your husband look not to ye i know what will I humbly thank your worship, and so I take my leave. You have a hand, I hear, too. I have two, sir. In my young daughter's business. Mm, you will find there a fitter hand than mine to reach her frets, and play down diddle to her. I shall watch ye. Do. And I shall have justice. Where? That's all one. I shall be with you at a turn henceforward. Get you a posset, too. And so good even, sir. Exeunt. Enter Petruchio, Jaques, and Pedro. 
And as I told your worship, all the hangings, brass, pewter, plate, even to the very looking glasses. And that that was hung for our defence, the armour, and the march beer was going too. Ah, Jacques, what a sad sight that was. Even the two rundlets, the two that was our hope of Muscadel, never better tongue tripped over. Those two cannons, to better brawn with all at Christmas, sir, even those two lovely twins, the enemy had almost cut off clean. Go trim the house up, and put the things in order as they were. Exit Pedro and Jaques. I shall find time for all this. Could I find her but constant anyway, I had done my business. Were she a whore directly, or a scold, an unthrift, or a woman made to hate me, I had my wish, and knew which way to rein her. But while she shows all these, and all their losses, a kind of linsey woolsey mingled mischief, not to be guessed at, and whether true or borrowed, not certain neither what hap had I, and what a tidy fortune when my fate flung me upon this bare whelp. Here she comes, now. Enter Maria. If she have a colour, for the fault is a cleanly one, upon my conscience, I shall forgive her yet, and find a something certain I married for. Her wit. I'll mark her. Not let his wife come near him in his sickness? Not come to comfort him? She that all laws of heaven and nations have ordained his second? Is she refused? And two old paradoxes, pieces of five and fifty, without faith clapped in upon him? He's a little pet that all young wives must follow necessary, having their maidenheads. This is an axiom I never heard before. Or say rebellion, if we durst be so foul, which two fair words, alas, win us from, in an hour, an instant, we are so easy, make him so forgetful both of his reason, honesty, and credit, as to deny his wife a visitation? His wife that, though she was a little foolish, loved him, oh, heaven forgive her for it, nay, doted, nay, had run mad had she not married him. Though I do know this falser than the devil, I cannot choose but love it. What do I know but those that came to keep him might have killed him? In what a case had I been then? I dare not believe him such a base, debauched companion, that one refusal of a tender maid would make him feign this sickness out of need, and take a keeper to him of fourscore to play at billiards, one that mewed content and all her teeth together, not come near him. This woman would have made a most rare Jesuit. She can prevaricate on anything. There was not to be thought a way to save her in all imagination beside this. His unkind dealing, which was worst of all, in sending who knows whether all the plate and all the household stuff, had I not crossed it by a great providence, and my friend's assistance, which he will thank me one day for, alas, I could have watched as well as they have served him in any use, better and willinger. The law commands me to do it, love commands me, and my own duty charges me. Heaven bless me, and now I have said my prayers, I'll go to her. Are you a wife for any man? For you, sir. If I were worse, I were better. That you are well, at least that you appear so, I thank heaven. Long may it hold, and that you are here I am glad too. But that you have abused me wretchedly, and such a way that shames the name of husband, such a malicious, mangy way, so mingled, never look strangely on me, I dare tell you, with breach of honesty, care, kindness, manners. Holla, you kick too fast. Was I a stranger? Or had I vowed perdition to your person? Am I not married to you? Tell me that. I would, I could not tell you. Is my presence the stock I come from which is worshipful, if I should say right worshipful I lied not, my grandsire was a knight. Or the shire? A soldier, which none of all thy family e'er heard of, but one conductor of thy name, a grazier that ran away with pay. Or am I grown, because I have been a little peevish to you, only to try your temper, such a dog-leech I could not be admitted to your presence? If I endure this, hang me. And two death's heads, two hairy groats that had their faces worn, almost their names away too. Now hear me, for I will stay no longer. This you shall. 
However you shall think to flatter me for this offence, which no submission can ever mediate for, you'll find it so. Whatever you shall do by intercession, what you can offer, what your land can purchase, what all your friends or families can win, shall be but this, not to forswear your knowledge, but ever to forbear it. Now your will, sir. Thou art the subtlest woman I think living. I am sure the lewdest. Now be still and mark me. Were I but any way addicted to the devil, I should now think I had met a playfellow to profit by, and that way the most learned that ever taught to murmur. Tell me, thou, thou most poor, paltry, spiteful whore, do you cry? I'll make you roar before I leave. Your pleasure? Was it not sin enough, thou fruiterer, full of the fall thou eatst? Thou devil's broker, thou seminary of all sedition, thou sword of vengeance, with a thread hung o'er us, was it not sin enough and wickedness in full abundance? Was it not vexation, at all points, cap -a Nay, I shall pinch you, thus, like a rotten rascal, to abuse the name of heaven, the tie of marriage, the honour of thy friends, the expectation of all that thought thee virtuous, with rebellion, childish and base rebellion, but continuing after forgiveness, too, and worse your mischief, and against him, setting the hope of heaven by, and the dear reservation of his honour, nothing above ground could have won to hate thee. Well, go thy ways. Yes. You shall hear me out first. What punishment mayst thou deserve, thou thing, thou idle thing of nothing, thou pulled primrose that two hours after art a weed and withered, for this last flourish on me? Am I one selected out of all the husbands living to be so ridden by a tit of ten pence? Am I so blind and bedrid? I was mad, and had the plague, and no man must come near me. I must be shut up, and my substance bezzled, and an old woman watch me. Well, sir, well, you may well glory in it. And when it comes to opening, tis my plot. I must undo myself forsooth. Dost hear me? If I should beat thee now, as much may be, dost thou not well deserve it, O oh, thy conscience? Dost thou not cry, come beat me? I defy you. And my last loving tears farewell. The first stroke, the very first you give me, if you dare strike, try me, and you shall find it so forever never to be recalled. I know you love me, mad, till you have enjoyed me. I do turn utterly from you. And what man I meet first, that has but spirit to deserve a favour, let him bear any shape, the worse the better, shall kill you and enjoy me. What I have said about your foolish sickness, ere you have me as you would have me, you shall swear is certain, and challenge any man that dares deny it, and in all companies approve my actions. And so farewell for this time. Exit, Mariah. Grief go with thee. If there be any witchcrafts, herbs, or potions, saying my prayers backward, fiends, or fairies, that can again unlove me, I am made. Exit. Scene two. Enter Bianca and Tranio. Mistress, you must do it. Are the writings ready, I told you of? Oh, yes, they are ready, but to what use I know not. <sighs> You're an ass. You must have all things construed. Yes, <laughs> and pierced too, or I find little pleasure. Now you are knavish. Go to, fetch Roland hither presently. Your twenty pound lies bleeding else. She is married within these twelve hours, if we cross it not, and see the papers of one size. Ha! I have ye! And for disposing of em. If I fail you, now I have found the way, you use martial law, and cut my head off with a handsaw. Well, sir. Petronius and Moroso, I'll see sent for. About your business, go! I am gone! Exit Tranio. Enter Livia. Ho, oh, Livia! Who's there? A friend of yours. Lord, how you look now, as if you had lost a carrick. Oh, Bianca, I am the most undone, unhappy woman. Be quiet, wench. Thou shalt be done, and done, and done, and double done, or all shall split for it. No more of these minced passions, they are mangy, and ease thee of nothing but a little wind. An apple will do more. Thou fearest Moroso. Even as I fear the gallows. Keep thee there still. And you love Roland? Say. If I say not, I am sure I lie. What wouldst thou give that woman? 
in spite of all his anger, and thy fear, and all thy father's policy, that could clap ye within these two nights quietly into a bed together. How? Why, fairly, at half-sword man and wife. Now the red blood comes. I marry, now the matter's changed. Bianca, methinks you should not mock me. Mock a pudding. I speak good honest English, and good meaning. I should not be ungrateful to that woman. I know thou wouldst not. Follow but my counsel, and if thou hast him not, despite of fortune, let me never know a good night more. You must be very sick at the instant. Well, what follows? And in that sickness send for all your friends, your father, and your fever-old Moroso, and Roland shall be there too. What of these? Do you not twitter yet? Of this shall follow that which shall make thy heart leap, and thy lips venture as many kisses as the merchants do dollars to the East Indies. You shall know all. But first, walk in and practice. Pray, be sick. I do believe you, and I am sick. Do. To bed, then, come, and I'll send away your servants. Post for your fool and father, and good fortune, as we mean honesty, now strike an upshot. Exeunt. Scene three. Enter Tranio and Roland. Nay, on my conscience, I have lost my money. But that's all one. I'll never more persuade you. I see you are resolute, and I commend you. But did she send for me? You dare believe me? I cannot tell. You have your ways for profit allowed you, Tranio, as well as I have to avoid them, fear. No, on my word, sir, I deal directly with you. Enter servant. How now, fellow? Whither post you so fast? Oh, sir, my master. Pray, did you see my master? Why your master? Sir, his jewel. With a gilded button. My pretty mistress Livia. What of her? Is fallen sick o' the sudden. How o' the sullens? O' the sudden, sir. I say very sick. It seems she hath got the toothache with raw apples. It seems you have got the headache, sir. Very well, sir. You did not see my master. Who told you so? No, no, he did not see him. Exit servant. Farewell, blue bottle. What should her sickness be? For you it may be. Yes, when my brains are out I may believe it. Never before, I'm sure. Yet, I may see her. T'will be a point of honesty. It will, sir. It may be not, too. You would fain be fingering the old sin offering of two hundred, Tranio. How daintily and cunningly you drive me up like a deer to the toil, yet I may leap it. And what's the woodman then? A loser by you. Speak, will you go or not? To meet his equal. Come, what goes less? Nay, not a penny, Roland. Shall I have liberty of conscience, which by interpretation is ten kisses? Hang me if I affect her, yet it may be, this horse and manners will require a struggling of two and twenty, or by our lady thirty. By our lady I'll require no wager, then, for if you kiss so often, and no kindness, I have lost my speculation, I'll allow you. Speak like a gamster now. It may be two. Under a dozen, Tranio, there's no setting. You shall have forty shillings wink at small faults. Say I take twenty come. By all that's honest, I do it but to vex her. I'll know by blows. If you can love her, do. If you can hate her. Or any else that loves you. Prithee, Tranio. Though I fare well, twenty pound will not undo me. You have my resolution. And your money. Which, since you are so stubborn, if I forfeit, make me a jack o' lent, and break my shins for untagged points and compters. I'll go with you. But if thou gett'st a penny by the bargain, a parting kiss is lawful? I allow it. Knock out my brains with apples, yet a bargain. I tell you, I'll know bargains, when and wear it. Thou art the strangest fellow. <laughs> That's all one. Along then, twenty pound more, if thou darest. I give her not a good word. Not a penny. Exeunt. Scene four. Enter Petruchio, Jaques, and Pedro. Prithee, entreat her come. I will not trouble her above a word or two, ere I endure this life. Exit Pedro. And with a woman, and a vowed one, to all the mischief she can lay upon me, I'll go to plough again, and eat leek porridge. Begging's a pleasure to it, not to be numbered. No, there be other countries jaquis for me, and other people, yea, and other women. If I have need, here's money. 
there's your ware, which is fair dealing, and the sun, they say, shines as warm there as here, until I have lost either myself or her, I care not whether nor which first. Will your worship hear me? And utterly outworn the memory of such a curse as this, none of my nation shall ever know me more. Out, alas, sir! What a strange way do you run! Anyway, so I outrun this rascal. Methinks now, if your good worship could but have the patience. The patience? Why the patience? Why, I'll tell you, could you but have the patience? Well, the patience. To laugh at all she does, or when she rails, to have a drum beaten o'er the top of the house, to give the neighbors warning of her alarms, as I do when my wife rebels. Thy wife? Thy wife's a pigeon to her, a mere slumber, the dead of night's not stiller. Nor an iron mill. But thy wife is certain. Well, that's false doctrine. You never read of a certain woman. Thou knowst her way. I should do, I am sure. I have ridden it night and day this twenty year. But mine is such a drench of balderdash, such a strange carded cunningness. The rainbow, when she hangs bent in heaven, sheds not her colours quicker and more than this deceitful woman weaves in her dyes of wickedness. Enter Pedro. What says she? Nay, not a word, sir. But she pointed to me, as though she meant to follow. Pray, sir, bear it even as you may. I need not teach your worship. The best men have their crosses. We are all mortal. What ails the fellow? And no doubt she may, sir. What may she, or what does she, or what is she? Speak and be hanged. She's mad, sir. Heaven continue it. Amen, if it be his pleasure. How mad is she? As mad as heart can wish, sir. She has dressed herself, saving your worship's reverence, just i' the cut of one of those that multiply i' the suburbs for single money, and as dirtily. If any speaks to her, first she whistles, and then she begins her compass with her fingers, and points to what she would have. What new way is this? There came in Master Sophocles. And what did Master Sophocles when he came in? Get my trunks ready, sirrah. I'll be gone straight. He's here to tell you she's horn mad. Enter Sophocles. Call ye this a woman? Yes, sir, she is a woman. Sir, I doubt it. I had thought you had made experience. Yes, I did so, and almost with my life. You rid too fast, sir. Pray be not mistaken. By this hand your wife's as chaste and honest as a virgin. For anything I know. Tis true she gave me a ring. For rutting. You are much deceived still. Believe me, I never kissed her since. And now, coming in visitation, like a friend, I think she is mad, sir. Suddenly she started, and snatched the ring away, and drew her knife out, to what intent I know not. Is this certain? As I am here, sir. I believe you honest, and pray continue so. Enter Maria. She comes. Now, damsel, what will your beauty do if I forsake you? Do you deal by signs and tokens, as I guess then you'll walk abroad this summer and catch captains or hire a piece of holy ground in the suburbs and keep a nest of nuns? Oh, do not stir her! You see in what a case she is. She is dogged, and in a beastly case, I am sure. I'll make her, if she have any tongue yet tattle. Sophocles, prithee, observe this woman seriously, and I her well, and when thou hast done but tell me, for thou hast understanding, in what case my sense was when I chose this thing. I'll tell you I have seen a sweeter. An hundred times cry oysters. There's a poor beggar wench about Blackfriars runs on her breech. May be an empress to her. Nay, now you are too bitter. Never a whit, sir. I'll tell thee, woman, for now I have day to see thee. And all my wits about me, and I speak not out of passion neither. Leave your mumping. I know you're well enough. Now would I give a million but to vex her. When I chose thee to make a bedfellow, I took more trouble than twenty terms can come to. Such a cause, of such a title, and so everlasting, that Adam's genealogy may be ended, ere any law find thee. I took a leprosy, nay worse, the plague, nay worse yet, a possession, and had the devil with thee. If not more, and yet worse, was a beast, and like a beast had my reward, a jade to fling my fortunes. For who that had but reason to distinguish the light from darkness, wine from water, hunger from full satiety, and fox from fern-bush that would have married thee? She is not so ill. 
"'She's worse than I dare think of. "'She's so lewd. "'No court is strong enough to bear her cause. "'She hath neither manners, honesty, behaviour, "'wifehood, nor womanhood, "'nor any mortal can force me think she had a mother. "'No, I do believe her steadfastly, "'and know her to be a woman wolf by transmigration. "'Her first form was of ferrets underground. "'She kills the memories of men. "'Not yet?' "'Do you think she's sensible of this?' "'I care not. Be what she will. "'The pleasure I take in her, thus I blow off. "'The care I took to love her, like this point I untie, "'and thus I loose it. "'The husband I am to her, thus I sever. "'My vanity, farewell. "'Yet, for you have been so near me, "'as to bear the name of wife, "'my unquenched charity shall tell you thus much, "'though you deserve it well. "'You shall not beg what I ordained your jointure, "'Honestly, you shall have settled on you, and half my house. "'The other half shall be employed in prayers. "'That meritorious charge I'll be at also, yet to confirm you Christian. "'Your apparel and what belongs to build up such a folly keep, I beseech you. "'It infects our uses. "'And now I am for travel.' "'Now I love you. "'And now I see you are a man, I'll talk to you, and I forget your bitterness.' "'How now, man?' O oh, Pliny, if thou wilt be ever famous, make but this woman all thy wonders. Sure, sir, you have hit upon a happy course, a blessed, and what will make you virtuous? She'll ship me. A way of understanding I long wished for, and now tis come. Take heed you fly not back, sir. Methinks you look a new man to me now, a man of excellence. And now I see some great design set in you. You may think now, and so may most that know me, T'were my part weakly to weep your loss, and to resist you, nay, hang about your neck, and like a dotard urge my strong tie upon you. But I love you, and all the world shall know it, beyond woman, and more prefer the honour of your country, which chiefly you are born for, and may perfect, the uses you may make of other nations, the ripening of your knowledge, conversation, the full ability and strength of judgment, than any private love or wanton kisses. Go worthy, man, and bring home understanding. This were an excellent woman to breed schoolmen. For if the merchant through unknown seas plough to get his wealth, then, dear sir, what must you to gather wisdom? Go, and go alone, only your noble mind for your companion, and if a woman may win credit with you, go far, too far you cannot, still the farther the more experience finds you, and go sparing. One meal a week will serve you, and one suit through all your travels. For you'll find it certain, the poorer and the baser you appear, the more you look through still. Dost hear her? Yes. What would this woman do if she were suffered upon a new religion? Make us pagans. I wonder that she writes not. Then, when time and fullness of occasion have new made you, and squared you from a sot into a senior, or, nearer, from a jade into a courser, come home an aged man, as did Ulysses, and I your glad Penelope. That must have as many lovers as I languages, and what she does with one in the day, in the night undo it with another. Much that way, sir, for in your absence it must be my honour, that, that must make me spoken of hereafter, to have temptations, and not little ones, daily and hourly offered me, and strongly, almost believed against me, to set off the faith and loyalty of her that loves you. What should I do? Why, by my, I would travel? Did not you mean so? Alas, no, nothing less, man. I did it but to try, sir. She is the devil. And now I find it, for she drives me. I must go. Are my trunks down there? Are my horses ready? Sir, for your house. And if you please to trust me with that you leave behind. Bring down the money. As I am able, and to my poor fortunes, I'll govern as a widow. I shall long to hear of your well-doing and your profit, and when I hear not from you once a quarter, I'll wish you in the Indies or Kataya. Those are the climes must make you. How's the wind? She'll wish me out of the world anon. For France, tis very fair. Get you aboard to-night, sir, and lose no time. You know the tide stays no man. I have cold meats ready for you. Fare thee well. Thou hast fooled me out of the kingdom with a vengeance, and thou canst fool me in again. Not I, sir. I love you better. Take your time and pleasure. I'll see you horsed. I think thou wouldst see me hanged, too, were I but half as willing. Any 
anything that you think well of, I dare look upon. You'll bear me to the land's end, Sophocles, and other of my friends, I hope. Never doubt, sir. You cannot want companions for your good. I am sure you'll kiss me ere I go. I have business, and stay long here I must not. Get thee going, for if thou tarriest but another dialogue, I'll kick thee to thy chamber. Fare you well, sir, and bear yourself, I do beseech you, once more, since you have undertaken doing wisely, manly, and worthily, tis for my credit. And for those flying fames here of your follies, your gambols, and ill-breeding of your youth, for which I understand you take this travel, nothing should make me leave you else. I'll deal so like a wife that loves your reputation, and the most large addition of your credit that those shall die. If you want lemon-waters, or anything to take the edge of the sea off, pray speak and be provided. Now the devil that was your first good master shower his blessing upon ye all, into whose custody— I do commit your reformation, and so I leave you to your stilo novo. Exit Maria. I will go, yet I will not. Once more, Sophocles, I'll put her to the test. You had better go. I will go, then. Let's seek my father out, and all my friends, to see me fare aboard. Then women, if there be a storm at sea, worse than your tongues can make, and waves more broken than your dissembling faiths are, let me feel nothing but tempests, till they crack my keel. Exeunt. End of Act Four. Act Five of The Woman's Prize. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Woman's Prize, or The Tamer Tamed, by John Fletcher. Act Five, Scene One. Enter Petronius and Bianca, with four papers. Now, whether I deserve that blame you gave me, let all the world discern, sir. If this motion, I mean this fair repentance of my daughter, spring from your good persuasion, as it seems so, I must confess I have spoke too boldly of you, and I repent. The first touch was her own, taken no doubt from disobeying you. The second I put to her when I told her how good and gentle yet with free contrition again you might be purchased. Loving woman, she heard me, and I thank her, thought me worthy observing in this point. Yet all my counsel, and comfort in this case, could not so heal her, but that grief got his share too, and she sickened. I am sorry she is so ill, yet glad her sickness has got so good a ground. Enter Moroso. Here comes Moroso. Oh, you are very welcome. Now you shall know your happiness. I am glad on it. What makes this lady here? A dish for you, sir. You'll thank me for hereafter. True, Moroso. Go, get you in and see your mistress. She is sick, sir, but you may kiss her whole. How? Comfort her. Why am I sent for, sir? Will you in and see? Maybe she needs confession. By St. Mary she shall have absolution then, and penance, but not above her carriage. Exit Moroso. Get you in, fool. Here comes the other, too. Enter Roland and Tranio. Now, Tranio, good evening to you too, and you are welcome. Thank you. I have a certain daughter. Would you had, sir? No doubt you know her well. Nor never shall, sir. She is a woman, and the ways unto her are like the finding of a certain path after a deep-fallen snow. Well, that's by the by still. This daughter that I tell you of is fallen a little crop sick with the dangerous surfeit she took of your affection. Mine, sir. Yes, sir. Or rather, as it seems, repenting. And there she lies within debating on't. Well, sir. I think twere well you would see her. If you please, sir. I am not squeamish of my visitation. But uh, this I'll tell you. She has altered much. You'll find her now another Livia. I have enough of the old, sir. No more fool to look gay babies in your eyes, young Roland, and hang about your pretty neck. I am glad on it, and thank my fates I have escaped such execution. And bust you to do blush again. That's hard, sir. She must kiss me shamefully ere I blush at it. I never was so boyish. Well, what follows? She's mine now, as I please to settle her at my command, and where I please to plant her. 
only she would take a kind of farewell of you and give you back a wandering vow or two you left in pawn and two or three slight oaths she lent you too she looks for she shall have em with all my heart sir and if you like it better a free release in writing that's the matter and you from her you shall have another roland and then turn tail to tail and peace be with you so be it your twenty pounds sweats tranio twill not undo me roland do your worst come shall we see her sir whate'er she says you must bear manly roland for her sickness has made her somewhat teetish let her talk till her tongue ache i care not by this hand there hast a handsome face wench and a body daintily mounted. Now I do feel an hundred running directly from me as I pissed it. Enter Livia discovered a bed, and Moroso by her. Pray, draw em softly. The least hurry, sir, puts her to much impatience. How is't, daughter? Oh, very sick, very sick, yet somewhat better, I hope, a little light summer, because this good man has forgiven me. Pray, set me higher. Oh, my head! Well done, wench. Father, and all good people that shall hear me, I have abused this man perniciously. Was never an old man humbled, I have scorned him, and called him nasty names. I have spit at him, flung candle's ends in his beard, and called him Harrow. That must be drawn to all he does. Contempt him, for me thought then he was a beastly fellow. Oh, God, my side! A very beastly fellow. And gave it out. His cassock was a badge cloth, pawned to his predecessor by a sculler. The man yet living. I gave him purging comforts at a great christening once. I spoiled his chamblay breeches, and one night I strew the stairs with peas. As he passed down, and good gentleman, well worth me fought. Even with his reverent head, his head of wisdom, told two twenty stairs, good and true, missed not a step. And, as we say, Verbatim fell to the bottom, broke his casting bottle, lost a fair toadstone of some eighteen shillings, jumbled his joints together, had two stools, and was translated. All this villainy I did! I, Livia, alone, untaught! And I, unasked, forgive it. Where's Bianca? Here, cousin. Give me drink. There. Who's there? Roland. Oh, my dissembler, you and I must part. Come nearer, sir. I am sorry for your sickness. Be sorry for yourself, sir. You have wronged me, but I forgive you. Are the papers ready? I have them here. Will't please you view them? Yes. Show them the young man, too. I know he's willing to shift his sails, too. Tis for his advancement. Alas, we might have been beggared one together. We are both young, and a world of children might have been left behind to curse our follies. We have been undone, Bianca. Had we married, undone for ever. I confess I loved him. I care not who shall know it. Most entirely. And once, upon my conscience, he loved me. But farewell that. We must be wiser, cousin. Love must not leave us to the world. Have you done? Yes, and I'm ready to subscribe. Pray stay then. Give me the papers and let me peruse them, and so much time as may afford a tear at our last parting. Pray retire and leave her. I'll call ye presently. Come, gentlemen, the shower must fall. Would I had never seen her. Exeunt. Thou hast done bravely, wench. Pray heaven it proved so. There are the other papers. When they come, begin you first, and let the rest subscribe hard by your side. Give them as little light as drapers do their wares. Didst mark Moroso? In what agony he was, and how he cried most when I abused him most. That was but reason. Oh, what a stinking thief this is! Though I was but to counterfeit, he made me directly sick. Thames Street to him is a mere pomanda. Let him be hanged. Amen. And lie you still, and once more to your business. Call them in. Now, if there be a power that pities lovers, help now and hear my prayers. Enter Petronius, Roland, Tranio, Moroso. Is she ready? 
She has done her lamentations. Pray, go to her. Roland, come nearer, and before you seal, give me your hand. Take it again. Now kiss me. This is the last acquaintance we shall have. I wish you ever happy. There's the paper. Pray stay a little. Let me never live more, but I do begin to pity this young fellow. How heartily he weeps. There's pen and ink, sir. Even here, I pray you. Tis a little emblem how near you have been to me. There. Your hands, too, as witnesses. By any means, to the book, son. With all my heart. You must deliver it. There, Livia, and a better love light on thee. I can no more. To this you must be witness, too. We will. Do you deliver it now? Pray set me up. There, Roland, all thy old love back, and many a new to come exceeding mine, and be happy. I must no more. Farewell. A long farewell. Exit Roland. Leave her by any means till this wild passion be off her head. Draw all the curtains close. A day hence you may see her. Twill be better. She is now for little company. Pray, tend her. I must a horse straight. You must needs along too, to see my son aboard. Were but his wife as fit for pity as this wench, I were happy. Time must do that too. Fare ye well. To-morrow you shall receive a wife to quit your sorrow. Exeunt. Scene two. Enter Jaques, Pedro, and Porters, with chest and hampers. Bring him away, sirs. Must the great trunks go too? Yes, and the hampers. Nay, be speedy, masters. He'll be at sea before us else. O Jaques, what a blessed turn hast thou. I hope so. To have the sea between thee and this woman. Nothing can drown her tongue but a storm. By your leave, we'll get us to Paris with all speed. For on my soul, as far as Amiens, she'll carry blank. Away to Lyon Quay and ship em presently. We'll follow ye. Now could I wish her in that trunk? God shield man. I'd rather have a variant. Yes, I'll tell ye. For in the passage, if a tempest take ye, as many do, and you lie beating for it, then, if it please the fates, I would have the master, out of a powerful providence, to cry, Lighten the ship of all hands, or we perish. Then, this for one, as best spared, should by all means overboard presently. Oh, that condition, so we were certain to be rid of her. I would wish her with us, but believe me, Pedro, she would spoil the fishing on this coast forever. For none would keep her company but dogfish, as currish as herself, or porpoises made to all fatal uses. The two fish streets, were she but once arrived amongst the whitings, would sing a woeful misieri, Pedro, and mourn in poor John, till her memory were cast ashore again with a strong sea breach. She would make God Neptune and his fire fork and all his demigods and goddesses as wary of the Flemish Channel, Pedro, as ever boy was of the school. Tis certain, if she but meet him fair and were well angered, she would break his godhead. Oh, her tongue, her tongue. Rather her many tongues. Or rather strange tongues. <laughs> her lying tongue. Her lisping tongue. Her long tongue. Her lawless tongue. Her loud tongue. And her licorice. Many other tongues and many stranger tongues than ever Babel had to tell his runes were women raised withal, but never a true one. Enter Sophocles. Home with your stuff again. The journey's ended. What does your worship mean? Your master. O oh, Petruchio. O oh, poor fellows. O oh, Jaquiz, Jaquiz. O oh, your master's dead. His body coming back, his wife, his devil. The grief of her. Has killed him? Killed him. Killed him. Is there no law to hang her? Get ye in, and let her know her misery. I dare not, for fear impatience sees me, see her more. I must away again. Bid her for wifehood, for honesty, if she have any in her. 
even to avoid the shame that follows her. Cry if she can, your weeping cannot mend it. The body will be here within this hour. So tell her, and all his friends to curse her. Farewell, fellows. Exit Sophocles. Oh, she quees, she quees. Oh, my worthy master. Oh, my most beastly mistress. Hang her. Split her. Drown her directly. Starve her. Stink upon her. Stone her to death. May all she eat be eggs, till she run kicking mad for men. And he, that man, that gives her remedy, pray heaven, he may even ipso facto lose his longings. Let's go discharge ourselves, and he that serves her, or speaks a good word of her from this hour, a selgy curse light on him, which is Pedro. The fiend ride through him, booted and spurred, with a sivat's back. Exeunt. Scene three. Enter Roland and Tranio standing behind him. What a dull ass was I to let her go thus. Upon my life she loves me still. Well, paper, thou only monument of what I have had. Thou all the love now left to me, and now lost. Let me yet kiss her hand. Yet take my leave of what I must leave ever. Farewell, Livia. O oh, bitter words I'll read you once again, and then forever study to forget ye. How's this? Let me look better on it. A contract, a contract sealed and ratified, her father's hand set to it, and Moroso's? I do not dream, sure. Let me read again. The same still. Tis a contract. Tis so, Roland. And by virtue of the same, you pay me an hundred pound to-morrow. Art sure, Trania, we are both alive now? Wonder not, ye have lost. If this be true, I grant it. Tis most certain. There's a ring for you, too, you know it. Yes. When shall I have my money? Stay ye, stay ye, when shall I marry her? Tonight. Take heed now. You do not trifle with me. If you do, you'll find more payment than your money comes to. Come, swear. I know I am a man and find I may deceive myself. Swear faithfully. Swear me directly. Am I Roland? Yes. Am I awake? Ye are. Am I in health? As far as I conceive. Was I with Livia? You were, and had this contract. And shall I enjoy her? Yes, if you dare. Swear to all these. I will. As thou art honest, as thou hast a conscience, as that may ring thee if thou liest, all these to be no vision but a truth and serious. Then, by my honesty and faith and conscience, all this is certain. Let's remove our places. Swear it again. By blank, tis true. I have lost, then. And heaven knows I am glad on it. Let's go, and tell me all, and tell me how, for I am yet a pagan in it. I have a priest, too, and all shall come as even as two testers. Exeunt. Scene four. Enter Petronius, Sophocles, Moroso, and Petruchio born in a coffin. Set down the body, and one call her out. Enter Maria in black, and Jaques. You are welcome to the last cast of your fortunes. There lies your husband, there your loving husband, there he that was Petruchio, too good for ye. Your stubborn and unworthy way has killed him ere he could reach the sea. If ye can weep, now ye have cause, begin, and after death do something yet to the world to think ye honest. So many tears had saved him, shed in time, and as they are, so a good mind go with them, yet they may move compassion. Pray ye all hear me, and judge me as I am, not as you covet, for that would make me yet more miserable. Tis true I have cause to grieve, and mighty cause, and truly and unfeignedly I weep it. I see there's some good nature yet left in her. But what's the cause? Mistake me not, not this man. As he is dead, I weep for. Heaven defend it. I never was so childish. But his life, his poor, unmanly, wretched, foolish life, is that my full eye's pity. There's my mourning. Dost thou not shame? I do, and even to water, 
To think what this man was, to think how simple, how far below a man, how far from reason, from common understanding, and all gentry. While he was living here he walked amongst us. He had a happy turn. He died, I'll tell ye. These are the wants I weep for, not his person. The memory of this man, had he lived but two years longer, had begot more follies than wealthy autumn flies. But let him rest. He was a fool, and farewell he, not pitied, I mean in way of life or action, by any understanding man that's honest, but only in's posterity, which I, out of the fear his ruins might outlive him, in some bad issue, like a careful woman, like one indeed born only to preserve him, denied him means to raise. Unbutton me. I die indeed else. O oh, Maria, O oh, my unhappiness, my misery. Go to him, whore. If he perish, I'll see thee hanged myself. Why, why, Maria? I have done my worst, and have my end. Forgive me. From this hour make me what you please. I have tamed ye, and now am thou your servant. Look not strangely, nor fear what I say to you. Dare you kiss me? Thus I begin my new love. Once again? With all my heart. Once again, Maria. O oh, gentlemen, I know not where I am. Get ye to bed, then. There you'll quickly know, sir. Never know more your old tricks. Never, sir. You shall not need, for, as I have a faith, no cause shall give occasion. As I am honest, and as I am a maid yet, all my life, from this hour, since ye make so free profession, I dedicate in service to your pleasure. I marry, this goes roundly off. Go, Jaquiz. Get all the best meat may be bought for money and let the hogshead blood, I am born again. Well, little England, when I see a husband of any other nation, stern or jealous, I'll wish him but a woman of thy breeding, and if he have not butter to his bread till his teeth bleed, I'll never trust my travel. Enter Roland, Livia, Bianca, and Tronio. What have we here? Another Morris, sir, that you must pipe too. A poor married couple desire an offering, sir. Never frown at it. You cannot mend it now. There's your own hand, and yours, Moroso, to confirm the bargain. My hand? Or mine? You'll find it so. A trick? By a trick? Yes, sir, we tricked ye. Father. Hast thou laid with him? Speak. Yes, truly, sir. And hast thou done the deed, boy? I have done, sir, and that will serve the turn, I think. A match, then. I'll be the maker-up of this. Moroso, there's now no remedy, you see. Be willing. For be, or be not, he must have the wench. Since I am overreached, let's in to dinner. And if I can, I'll drink it away. That's well said. Well, sirrah, you have played a trick. Look to it. And let me be a grandsire within twelve months, or by this hand I'll curtail half your fortunes. There shall not want my labour, sir. Your money, here's one has undertaken. Well, I'll trust her. I'm glad I have so good a pawn. I'll watch ye. Let's in, and drink of all hands, and be jovial. I have my colt again, and now she carries. And gentlemen, whoever marries next, let him be sure he keep him to his text. Exeunt Epilogue The tamer's tamed. But so, as nor the men can find one just cause to complain of, when they fitly do consider in their lives they should not reign as tyrants or their wives. Nor can the women from this precedent insult or triumph, it being aptly meant to teach both sexes due equality, and as they stand bound to love mutually. If this effect arising from a cause well laid and grounded may deserve applause, we something more than hope our honest ends will keep the men, and women too, our friends. End of Act Five End of The Woman's Prize, or The Tamer Tamed, by John Fletcher